King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Shalabros kela hasanda braduziata, ande la kasuda brahasade balatusia. Majesty, we bless you. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, we declare that your name alone be praised. Blessings and honor and glory and power be ascribed to you, O God of heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's an honor and a privilege, O God, every time we're gathered before you. And tonight you have brought us to grant us access to wisdom, to empower us, and to turn us into signs and wonders. Lord, we submit to your wisdom. And we cry in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Risen King, that tonight you will bless us in no small way. Open our eyes, grant us illumination. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. It's good to be back home. Hallelujah. Um, very quickly, let me welcome all who are worshiping with us for the first time inside outside online this is your first time worshiping with us tonight please wherever you are i'd like you to stand up on your feet just just stand very gallantly god bless you koinonia let's celebrate them celebrate them hallelujah praise the name of the lord hallelujah Please let me have one of the cards. On behalf of Jesus Christ himself, come. I salute every one of you and thank you so much for making our time to come. This is Koinonia, a meeting put together by Eternity Network International. It's worth clapping, my dear. I don't feel embarrassed. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We're here Fridays and God is helping us. Even as you've experienced and you will yet experience tonight, I guarantee you that your life will never be the same. Many of you have traveled from several regions uh, within and outside this nation. The Lord will not disappoint you. Um, there are officials standing at your left or right. They would give you a card that looks like this. The upper part is for your consumption. You can have that part. It contains details about the ministry. Please do make our time to go through it. The second half uh, would require you filling it. Please do well to complete it legibly. You can do that as soon as you are seated when we're done praying for you. And then they will collect it. You wave it and then they will come and pick it up. Um, it just helps us to follow you up and then to be able to reach you praise the name of the lord we're going to pray for you and it is the greatest gift we can give you on this day to speak words of blessings over your life the lord has anointed us and our words are not empty stretch your hands saints of god and let's bless them we decree and declare that the blessings of heaven rest upon you you go from glory to glory grace to grace every limitation in your life will be swallowed up tonight the hand of God is mighty upon you. Go from glory to glory. We bless you with hunger for spiritual things. We pray that every challenge you came here with, in the name of Jesus, it will crumble like the wall of Jericho. I decree and declare that you are blessed. You remain blessed. You remain lifted. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you and please be seated. Hallelujah. Let me start tonight by, I just, I just thought in my heart to do this, to truly appreciate every one of us um, and even our family outside of this localized region. We're a global family truly and you cannot believe the level of cohesion that although we are far from one another, I'm sure that 
the future will provide meetings that will make you see the other side of this family it's very large we constitute a minute fraction of the stretch that God has provided and we're honored to be part of what he's doing so I really want to appreciate everyone the love support I just wrote a few things down here and I'm looking at them and your prayers um, I think it was last week a dear gentleman from Sweden now people sow and give but he did something that I, I told him that I was going to appreciate him publicly um, I had met him once uh, when he um, I was to see him and a former ambassador to Rwanda and then he went back to Sweden and bought 1,000 shares for the ministry and is now, now he's, he's not the only one believe me there are literally thousands of people committing seeds sacrifices even over a project uh, I'm, I'm yet to even speak about it and and several people across um apostle just let us know what we can do this is how you know that the favor of god is upon you and when people go that far to honor you you must not take them for granted praise the lord so we really appreciate everyone um thank you so so much praise the name of the lord happy valentine <laughs> you know while while i was coming i was just thinking wondering what many of you would think i'll be sharing tonight <laughs> you will be surprised i will teach on rapture <laughs> What's wrong with teaching on rapture hallelujah I I trust that won't, won't take long tonight but I truly thought about what the Lord will have me share and I've been passionate about imparting wisdom this for me is the most important thing in this season the impartation of wisdom faculty of knowing what to do and I thought to just honor today by sharing with us um, three priorities in life I think I would call them the most important priorities in our lives the three most important priorities hallelujah is a strong charge but I trust that it will grant us wisdom um, it is very important please look up now it is very important that our days be spent in wisdom just because we are given the gift of time does not mean that as time passes we are making the most of our destinies are we together 200 years ago there was almost no one on earth today that is on earth today if Christ tarries 200 years after now then most probably maybe maybe just a few people if at all and so it means that we're in the middle of a time frame that must be utilized with wisdom are we together and um, I thank God for a dimension of philosophical approach that he's given me as far as interpreting life is concerned it's been beneficial to my life and I trust that God will bless us tonight in Jesus name so can you pray in one minute again open my eyes remember we keep praying this prayer it's not a ritual Open my eyes. I am in your presence. I have come to Mount Zion. Let my eyes be open. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So three important priorities. Now, please look up. God gave us 24 hours. The unit of destiny is time. Time is the unit of destiny. That means that your entire lifespan is measured as a function of time. 
every day that passes chronos we call it the passage of time it counts to your overall destiny and it matters that we are equipped with the knowledge that helps us to live lives that are effective and relevant i had the privilege to be profoundly mentored by dr miles munro and so it gave me a very very intelligent perspective about life about purpose about vision and i'm ever grateful for it hallelujah now not everything in your life produces the same effect as far as your destiny is concerned please listen god gave us 24 hours and is full of several activities that can move us towards destiny but not all of them move us at the same level and not all of them carry the same gravity are we together now it is very important i think one of the the wrong perceptions that our generation has is that we allocate equal time an equal priority and equal interest to everything and anything your time for play is equal to your time of prayer your time of gisting is equal to your time of personal development there must be a system of prioritizing your life please listen very carefully and so I want to show you the three in my opinion and supported by scripture the three most important things in a man's life these three areas i want to show you tonight are worth dying for not everything is worth dying for hallelujah there are people who have died for nothing there are people who have died the deaths of fools it is important to know what is worth committing your energy your time and your money listen at the end of your life there are only few things that will make your life count believe me when i tell you this in the maze of several activities clamoring for your attention you know the average young man is is like a magnet attracting different things that need your attention in life and i have found out in my little experience and by the privilege of wisdom and mentorship and the word that in the end of your life there are not more than four five things that are worth living for so in in our busyness our attempt to make money marry have children serve god grow ministries expand all of these things are important but a time must come in your life where you have to just shut the door and say what is really important because many of us as i'll be showing you if you don't know what is important you will major on the minors and you will minor on the majors are we together now praise the lord right so very quickly the first and most important priority in any man's life regardless of call regardless of assignment regardless of whatever it is your experience is the first real priority worth dying for worth living for is your relationship with God please write it down your relationship with God is not the first most important thing it is the highest your relationship with God what is the purpose of God in your life please look up you will be surprised how many believers cannot answer this question what is the purpose of God in a man's life many will tell you to make us rich many will tell you to make us succeed you're not wrong but you're not entirely right what exactly is the purpose of God why should Bill Gates need God why should the leader of a terrorist group need God why should a first-class student need God why should a dying man need God why is it that when you stand uh, at the bed of someone about to die you will not tell him remember your real estate have you written your will you just say please have you made your ways right with God and if he gives his life to Christ you can stand there and smile while he transits your relationship 
with God. What is the purpose of God in your life? I want to tell you. Because many believers do not know the purpose and the relevance of God. We only know some of the things that he can do. But why do I need God? And if we do not clear up this understanding, it will affect us in the future. Because Africa, look up please. Africa as a continent, because we are saddled with our pressure of poverty and the need for relevance and several things, it necessitates our, our religious affiliations. So you find out that when people go out of this region and life is comfortable, they have um, policies that support their well-being, usually they will not need God again. So what is the purpose of God in my life? Is it to make me a man of God? Is it to make me get a job? See, purpose is what gives value to everything in life. No matter what you have and no matter what you do, if it is not supported by purpose, purpose answers the question, why? Why God? Is God blessing someone already? I want to give you three reasons why you need God in your life. Remember, we're examining the most important things, the priorities in a man's life number one God is important in your life because it is your relationship with God through Jesus Christ that secures your eternal destiny God is relevant in a man's life because without a relationship with God there is no guarantee for your eternal destiny John chapter 3 from verse 15 you read to 17 John chapter 3 it says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life then 16 says for God not for angel Michael not for angel Gabriel not for the third living creature for God himself so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have life everlasting why do i need god in my life because the only security to my eternal destiny is my relationship with god please listen to me there is no educational qualification that crosses the boundary of the earth realm there is no savvy business savvy that sustains the ability to cross the earth realm it is important for us to understand that our relationship with God is not just a tool for success alone. Primarily, the Bible says if our hope is only in this world, we are of all men most miserable. Listen to me. No matter what you lose in life, if your relationship with God is still intact, you are still a winner. Hear what I'm saying? And no matter what you gain in life, if you lose God in the process, you really lost. The Bible gives us the parable of the rich man. Are we Bible students? And Lazarus. That man had a lot of money. That man had so many things. And then he died. Lazarus died. Sin too. They now get to a realm where money does not count. They now get to a realm where education does not count. They now get to a realm where political affiliation is not an advantage. And the Lazarus is sitting at Abraham's bosom. And the man is at the other side. And he's standing, wondering, and crying for a drop of water. That means the purpose was not really to quench the kind of test you think. Are we, are we together now? Please listen to me. Let me tell you this. Your relationship with God is not loyalty to your parents' religion. Your relationship with God is not an affiliation that um, was brought about by your sympathy to Christianity. That you compared many religions and you felt like an award. This is the best. So I go for it. The proposition that we give people sometimes as ministers as to why they should come to God may be very sincere but it is dangerous 
if the only reason why I introduce you to God is because of tea and bread, then you are in trouble. The relevance of God spans this realm. It is very important. This is God for you. When it's all been said and done, There is just one thing that matters Did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done All my treasures will mean nothing Only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time. Lord, your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious joys in married clay, turning sinners into saints. And I will always sing your praise Here on earth and ever after Listen For you've shown me heaven's my true home When it's all been said and done You're my life when life Whether you like what I'm saying or not, a day will come when your wisdom will be tested. It will not be tested by an exam. It will be tested by a transition. The wise ones are the ones who will still stand whether or not they are in this realm. Listen, this is the reason why we continue to introduce people to Jesus. It's not that we are guilty of, of not being evangelists. No. Your relationship with God. So the first purpose of God in your life is the security of your eternal destiny. Number two, the second reason or the second purpose of God in your life, I hope you understand how I'm, I'm arranging it, is your exploits in life. It is true that you can succeed in life without God, but I guarantee you there will be a vacuum in your success that will make it clear that it's not God that brought you there. I've had the privilege, and I will tell you this, I've had the privilege to be connected to a lot of blessed and influential people. I have seen power, I have seen dimensions of wealth and relevance in the lives of people, but I'm surprised at the vacuum that refuses to be filled by these things. Education, money, prestige, and all of these things. When God lifts you, he lifts you in such a way that his space remains intact. Are we together now? Your exploits in life. Daniel 11.32 The Bible says the B part but the people that do know their God, it says they shall be strong and shall do exploits. Shall do exploits. Your excelling in life depends on your relationship with God. Second Samuel 22 and verse 30. Second Samuel 22 and verse 30. Second Samuel. He says, For by thee I have run to a troop. He says, By my God I have leaped over a wall. Impossible feats based on your connection with God. It is true that our connection with God transcends the relevance that this time brings but it also makes sense in this life oh taste and see 
that the Lord is good. That one with God is truly a majority. When God holds your hands, like the worship team will always sing, everything, everything is possible. It is true. When God decides to hold a man's hand, he will walk wonders through your life that will dumbfound principalities and powers. Your life becomes an epistle of wonder after wonder. Why do we need connection with God? Because our exploits in this life depends on it. The wisdom that comes from God, the creativity that comes from God, the anointing that comes from God. I met a family that cried to me and said, Apostle, our lives are in complete shambles. We've heard what God is doing through you. Please, can you pray for us? And I looked at them with joy in my heart because I knew their lives will change. Yes. There is what God can give you that will help you to change men, change cities, change territories. Connection with God is an advantage. And when I talk about God, I talk about the God of the Bible because God means many things to many people. So that there's no confusion, we're talking about the God, the creator of the ends of the earth. When you hold my hands, everything becomes possible. When you hold my hands, impossible becomes possible. When you hold my hands, everything becomes possible. job situation intimidate you don't let the pride of men intimidate you just make sure that at all times your hands are on his hands he says i have engraved you in the palm of my hands and step by step you will watch god lift you level by level listen my life is a testimony of what happens when god holds a man's hand when you hold god's hand is a good thing but when he holds your hand when you hold my hand everything becomes possible when you The Bible says, and the hand of God was upon, it came upon Elijah. When you do normal and natural things, it's not worthy of commendation. Because that's what men do. But when your life produces a result that only God can produce, it is proof that you are assisted by a divine hand. You need to strengthen your connection with God. of God in your life as far as earth is concerned as far as earth is concerned the third point I give you is that only God can give you true peace and fulfillment please write it down the third reason why you need God in your life is that only your connection with God guarantees peace and fulfillment. Everybody please say peace and fulfillment. Most people, please look up. You see, respectfully speaking, most of us here are, there are very few people here who are already established. 
from all of the indications of establishment and so most of us are on a journey or beginning the journey to establishment and so on and so forth so you may not value things like peace and fulfillment because you are still trying to make ends meet there is a level when you get to you will find out that nothing in life sustains the ability to give you peace the highest index for measuring wealth is peace write it now in advance and thank me decades to come the highest index for measuring wealth for measuring um, relevance is peace the highest measure of wealth and freedom that's what I wrote here the highest measure of wealth and freedom is peace three scriptures quickly Romans chapter 5 verse 1 chapter 5 therefore being justified by faith koinonia read on with me we have peace with god hold on don't rush peace with god is different from the peace of god peace with god means i have made my way right with god peace with god It's not the same as the peace of God that you have made peace with God. That means when I look at God, I stand with joy knowing that there is no barrier that interrupts fellowship. Peace with God. Peace with God. It says we are justified by faith and now we have peace with God. Most people do not have peace with God. We may have money. We may have titles. And these things are not wrong. We may have all of the things that people chase after. But when you lack peace with God, there is a serious problem. Because at the end of your life, what will give you fulfillment is knowing that my ways are right with God. Look how the generals that transited in recent times transited. Reinhard Bonke knowing that his time was almost there it was with joy and gladness he came to nigeria preached his he knew it was his last message he said it he had raised daniel colenda he had put everything in place and he said earth i see you when we join the cloud of witnesses to come and pick the rest he waved earth by peace with god these men knew where they were going. they were not hoping no billy graham one of the few people who finished his assignment and remain and were just watching earth you will know a man has finished his assignment set up the billy graham institute and when it was time with honor and with joy he waved his hand same thing tl osman there are people who wake up and say where am i they say you are not on earth again no. it's over it's over what happened the last thing I know is that I left one city. I was hurrying up to go. It's over. Period. Where is my PA? It doesn't exist here. Where is my certificate? It doesn't exist here. Peace with God. John 14, 27. It's a good Valentine message, isn't it? John 14, 27. <laughs> Read on with me, Koinonia. Ready? One, two, read. Peace, I live with you. Listen, listen, listen. Jesus is speaking here. Peace, I live with you. Among the many things, he, listen, there are two things the Bible tells us we should expect. One, peace. Two, the Holy Ghost. Peace, I live with you. You need it so much. Forget joy, it will come. But peace, I live with you. My peace, I give unto you not as the world gives it says give I unto you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid that means these two things will remain in your destiny until the peace of God comes to drive them out trouble fear will remain in your heart until the peace of God comes to build a garrison the peace of God 
Shalom. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. A state of restfulness. Look at me. The peace of God is not based on results. The peace of God is a supernatural impartation of that dimension. You can be in the midst of fire, yet you are like the still waters. If you are waiting for everything to be in place for you to have peace, that's how the world gives. But there is the peace of God that in spite of every storm in your life and your family, it is true that you've not paid your rent. It is true that things are, you know, haywire, your academics, your life is true. You've not had a child yet and people see you and you are completely restful. Because there are few things that are worth dying for. There's a peace that I have in spite of all the sadness that surrounds me and these peace in my heart only comes alive every time I hear comes it comes alive There are some of you who are doctors here look at me young people now are depressed over nothing is because they have not had this message you see people wrinkled you guess and say you are 40 say no i just clocked 28 what has added your age like that the trouble that continues to disturb people i need to make it i am not teaching you to be irresponsible but hear me you will die for nothing and the world will bury you and keep moving. You need to learn to come to a point where you say, Hey, shut the door at every trouble and everything. And find rest. He leads me beside the steel. Life has a noisy way of depressing you. Left, right, till now you've not gotten a job. Till now you've not married. The child has not come. This has not happened. Today, Valentine, nobody called you again. You see, all those kinds of listen, listen to me. When those things happen, it's amazing. Your BP begins to rise. You know why? You are thinking nonsense. That is not the mind of Christ. And yet you can be completely at peace. Where will my school fees come from? Where will my rent come from? Listen, worry does not solve today's problem. Worry kills today's peace. It kills today's opportunities. It destroys tomorrow's door. So that you cannot even make progress in your life. Jesus took a whole chapter to talk about worry. Listen, this is a very powerful message. Learn peace now. Don't wait till they pay you salary. If your peace depends on your external environment, Satan has mastered you. It means you are about to die fast. Only comes alive every time I hear your voice. Not every time I receive an alert. Not every time I receive an award. Not every time I feel I am making progress. The voice of God is my peace. Ah. A state of restfulness. Not irresponsibility. Restfulness. Lord, you are in control. Why will you be awake and I will be awake too? One of us should sleep. You have chosen that you do not sleep nor slumber. So let me find sleep. Many people don't sleep because of all kinds of depression. What is happening to my father? What is happening to my mother? And Satan just adjusts. Hey, do you know they just said that um, the land that your house was built upon, there's supposed to be a road there. And they're going, ha, ha, what will I do? And you see people, no. Say my soul, find rest. One more time, prophesy. Say, my soul, find rest. Find rest. This is how champions live. They are, they are shockingly peaceful. Because many times, when there is noise in your life, the voice of God is not there. There can be an earthquake and he's not in it. There can be all kinds of winds. And when all that nonsense is gone, then here he comes. The still small voice. Are we together? Do you know that every time we are troubled, 
we should change the power of God from coming to our lives. It is only when you are at rest. Even doctors will tell you when they want to carry out surgical operations on patients and they find out that their BP is vacillating, they will have to say, look, find a way of stabilizing these people emotionally. Is that true? They gather their family members to crack jokes. They find something that makes them happy. It's been proven that when family members are gathered around sick patients or things they like, it can aid their recovery. I was watching, I think it was the day before yesterday or so, on the news when they were showing people in China dancing to ease the whole the coronavirus. And people were just dancing. And it's, if it makes them happy, why not? Listen, beware of prolonged depression, gloominess, when, when the peace of God does not find expression in your life death is being ministered to you you are dying already it's not when you are sick and cannot move are we blessed peace second thessalonians chapter 3 verse 16 now the lord of peace himself give you peace how long by all means you know what by all means means whatever it, it will take God to shake to ensure that you remain out. the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means the Lord be with you all the Lord will give you peace by all means that is it is based on his desire to give you peace that he prospers you if he notices that the, the peace is being interrupted because of poverty, he will switch and attack poverty and take it personal. Not because he's really interested in money. The goal is that you find peace. Please understand this. When God lifts you, when God blesses you, when God wipes your tears, this is what he wants to give you. And he said, by all means, this is why he keeps pumping mysteries upon mysteries. He's giving you all the keys. It is his by all means agenda to make sure that whatever it will take, you do not remain small. The Lord of peace himself will give you peace always by all means. Are we blessed? So your relationship with God, this is the first most important priority in your life. Please look up. Believers, hear me. It matters that you make up your mind now that nothing will ever make me leave God in this life. You would think what I'm saying is very simple and very easy. No. Make up your mind. What shall separate us, the Bible says, from the love of God? Then it begins to list many things. For many people, they've not even seen one tenth of those things. And yet they're they are here because of God. I will wave you and will reconsider it when you, are in, when you are serious with me. People have left God because of marriage. People have left God because of money. People have left God because of education. People have left God because of all of those things. That you get to a point where you say, Lord, the issue of leaving you is like an initiation. I'm there and there for good. Make up your mind that I'm stuck with you and I'm stuck with you genuinely. I'm not using you. I am here to stay and I'm here to stay eternally. Now listen, your relationship with God is worth fighting for. Your relationship with God is worth dying for. Your relationship with God is the highest the noblest pursuit on earth fail in every other area of your life and ensure that you are rich towards God you still want did you hear what I said yes sir there were two men hanging on the tree they were thieves and one of them was arguing and talking a lot of nonsense towards Jesus and the other one you know began to call on his mercy and he said this day you will be with me in paradise straight up because he made a decision to be connected to God many people would rather be connected to politicians than God 
rather be connected to this now men are important but God first in the beginning it must remain so in the beginning not later in the equation God mm -mm. in the beginning God God is not an option when all else fail you say God talk since there's nowhere to go let me just no, 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 no. in the beginning and from the beginning let it be God from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you Jesus Oh, Jesus. I just wanted to sing that point. From beginning to the end. Alpha, Omega. God. Forever. I'm with you for the long run. I'm not with you for 10 years. I'm not. Have you seen people that you meet and you say, I used to know you. And they'll tell you, well, those days, FCS or SU or something. Say, now, nah, the reality of life has made us to go. Where did you go to? Jesus looked at the disciples and said, Will you also go? He said, To whom shall we go? No matter what happens in your life, please always make sure that you are on God's side. Guarantee that you are safe. Are we blessed? The first priority in a man's life is your relationship with God. Number two, the second most important priority in your life worth dying for worth living for worth sacrificing for is your family family is a very important thing in the sight of God family is a very important thing in society hallelujah family life is very important the most important unit of society is family Society is full of all kinds of institutions, religious institutions, judicial institutions, commerce, centers for commerce, but the most important unit and institution in any society is family. Someone say family. What is the purpose of family? Why is family important? I will give you two reasons number one your family in most cases will be your greatest support and motivation system put it this way your greatest support and motivation will almost always come from family family will generally provide you the greatest support system and the greatest motivation why is family important because your family both nuclear and then extended your family will usually not in all cases but in most cases will be the last place that you can fall back on when all fails no matter what you become or don't become you are almost sure that no matter what it is family will be your greatest support and will be your greatest motivation listen from scripture there is no guarantee that you have indefinite support and motivation anywhere the strongest support system and the strongest motivation system in your life will almost always there are very few exceptions but almost always be family It was because of family relationship that Joseph looked at his brothers and did not lock them up and looked at them and said, you guys, what you did 12 years, but we are family. Sit down and eat. Family is very, very important. Job, when Job lost almost everything in his life, the last person who was standing with him was not his brother, was not Elihu, was not the other two gentlemen. The Bible says in Job 42 verse 10 that when Job prayed for his friends, so he had friends that were alive. Where were they? He had friends that were alive. But they were not there. But his wife stood. Even though she was talking a lot of nonsense, at least she stood. The person that insults you and stands. 
it's like flogging a child and say, I will kill you. And you are still shifting him from the junction. Are we together? Family is very important. Look at me. If you do not understand the power of family, then you will be building catastrophe in your destiny. There is no guarantee that your church, koinonia, job, business, anything will indefinitely guarantee you. When everybody, listen to me, said crucify Jesus, when everything happened, at least when he resurrected, angels came. The Holy Ghost came on the third day to bring him back to life. And where did he go back to? Talk to me. He went and a throne was prepared at the right hand of the Father. And he sat down. Listen, please hear me. Your family is very important. First, your physical family. And then, your spiritual family. Your spiritual family is also family. They are the only ones who have the ability to take your nonsense and still love you. The whole world does not think you are that much of a big deal. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Family is very important. Family is very powerful. Your greatest support, your greatest motivation will come from family. Now, this is true. Listen, look up, please. And if you understand this, then all of the other things like marriage, relationship, destiny connections now become something you pay attention to. Why? Because you now know that your greatest support is family. You can lose a job, but you, your family remains your family. Even when they say they disown you, it's just a psychological statement. Are we together? family is important and that means that for you to excel in family life it requires serious preparation whether it is relationship whether it is marriage anything that has to do with family life my brothers and my sisters listen to me very carefully family life is a serious issue that requires very serious preparation The Bible says there is no man intending to build a house, he says, who will not sit down and count the cost. Write this down. The most important key to sustainable relationships and marriage is knowledge. The most important key, there are many other keys, but the most important key To sustainable relationships and marriage is knowledge please say knowledge the most important key to relationships and marriage and family especially within the context of marriage is not love no love is important but more than love knowledge broadly speaking wisdom knowledge and understanding proverbs 24 please give it to us from verse 3 and 4 you will need wisdom you will need knowledge you will need understanding through wisdom proverbs 24 and verse 3 says a house is built it says by understanding it is established verse 4 and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with precious and pleasant riches everybody say i need knowledge i am convinced look at me please i am convinced that one of the reasons why family life in many many circles around the world continues to um nose dive is because we do not pay attention to the knowledge dimension 
we only pay attention to the emotional side of marriage now watch this do you know the reason why although there are accidents they are minimized relative to the number of cars because they don't allow you to drive until you go to a driving school is that correct you go to a driving school you learn how to drive you are certified by a driving school it would take a while they would test you when you go to make your driver's license are we together they check you they profile you they make sure that you are doing well ideally speaking now and then eventually they give you the access to drive but anybody can just pick a lady from anywhere and just go anywhere if a church rejects you you go to a garden if a garden rejects you you stay at home and quietly you are married and because of that there is a lot of clash of opinions and ideas this is very important is bishop Oedipo who will say there is no new generation truth truth is truth believe me if all you take to the table of marriage and relationship is love you will be disappointed everything you hate now you once loved knowledge knowledge marriage in today's world and relationships require more than love there are many things that need to be put in place you need to have understanding of who a man is who a woman is conflict management systems leadership parenting finances these are real issues it doesn't mean you must know everything but there is a level of sufficient preparation listen no level of preparation and investment in marriage becomes a waste remember that marriage is for a lifetime marriage is not for two years 10 years 15 years marriage is not for when children come so no matter what kind of preparation it is very important is God blessing us family is very important when you lose family you have lost a major thing you will not die but you will be greatly affected you can lose a job and get another one you can lose money and have it again you can lose your reputation and build it back but when you lose family you lose a lot are we together we must trust God to build families that last and the key to building families is not the emotional activities of love 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 here and there it's more than that it takes knowledge wisdom understanding because the challenges that come in family are real issues that are solved only through knowledge they are not emotional problems alone and they require knowledge if you are together with me say amen hallelujah for instance the bible gives us you know in all fairness let, let me let me let me give you a confession I, I i i contemplated a lot whether i would talk about family you know and marriage and relationships and all of that um i thought about it but um I knew that I owe I owe you teaching you the truth of God's word number one and then number two it's an uncomfortable truth but let me tell you this the variables in marriage are too many to learn about marriage through opinions the variables every married man who agree that every home is unique and there is no general template based on personal experience and so we must be able to minimize experiences and focus on the Word of God are we together now yes and let me tell you this and I want to submit to you truly it is not always true that experience teaches about marriage it is not always true experience is an added advantage the major mentors in the issue of marriage in the Bible were not married themselves God Jesus Paul 
and yet they were the authorities that taught about marriage this is a thing of the spirit are we together I've always said a man can dwell with his wife for 30 years hurting and destroying this dear woman's life but just because she vowed that she would not divorce after 30 years they can use the template of their experience to teach that this is how to remain in marriage is wrong because the woman may have been quietly enduring pain for 30 years the word of God is living and abiding forever you will never go wrong with this book believe me when I tell you this you will never go wrong with this book are we together it's very important because I'm saying this because there are many young people unmarried who think that there's nothing to learn let me just marry and then I will start learning pragmatically no no the preparation for marriage is before there are foundational truths you should know before you will continue learning even when you are married are we together but there are truths that are foundational unbending and it's important for you to know can I just touch on two or three information number one we are discussing family look up please there is nowhere in the Bible where God tells a woman to love a man read your Bible God does not instruct women to love men women wives to respect their husbands because psychologically speaking love does not mean anything to a man but when you honor and respect that man that is his idea of love are we together now all men without reservation please listen to me no matter how emotionally appealing a woman is towards a man if genuine respect and honor is not there there is a violation of a foundational ordinance it's a matter of time there will be a repercussion the bible jesus himself spoke a bit about marriage and then in ephesians chapter 5 when you read the bible says wives submit wives respect respect now let me tell you this please look up it is true that honor should be for all men but there's all kinds of nonsense flowing around society that the concept of equality is being one with Christ but organically speaking listen ladies please hear me organically speaking the head of every woman is her husband he is not the head only when he brings food. He is the head as this. God knows what he built. And when he gives you a pattern, maintain it. Are we, are we together now? The Bible clearly tells us, Wives, your interpretation of love to a husband is submission and respect. That means... I hope you know the Bible says he that finds a wife finds a good thing. It didn't say he that finds a woman and makes her a wife. That means she must be a wife to be found. A wife does not happen when you are married. A wife is a mental position. Are we together now? It's, it, this is a very powerful revelation. The Bible, your Bible, look up please ladies. It means that every woman who wants to be successful in her home and every woman who wants to be successful even in a relationship must before a man comes to your life, the assignment you should be involved with is learning submission and learning respect. Because this is your, this is the mandate upon you to your husband. 
as Paul began to teach the church, it will be difficult, brothers and sisters, for a woman who truly understands respect and honor and submission to have a bad marriage. It will be difficult. There is something respect does to men. It makes them vulnerable. When a woman respects a man truly, when a woman submits to a man truly and unashamedly, she makes him owe her. He will owe her honor. He will owe her care. But ladies are gradually losing it because the context of modern day society tells you, look, you know, the whole, uh, you stand up for your right and so on and so forth. And we're corrupting God's pattern. It's a matter of time. There will be destruction. Hallelujah. Ask anybody who is from 50, 60, 70 years old and above in marriage, they will, because they've gone long enough to tell you, they will tell you sincerely that the strength of a woman is in her submission. Look up. The Bible, two books in the Bible are named after women. Ruth and Esther. Isn't it amazing that the book of Esther is not called Ahasuerus? And the book of Ruth is not called Boaz. And the books parallel themselves because the books have to do with number one, weak women. Ruth and Hadassah. Number two, the Bible, that book has to do with great successful and, and established men. Ahasuerus and Boaz. And in both books, the strength of the women was their weakness. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It was the dexterity of Esther's submission, her wisdom that made her to conquer her man, granted access for the promotion of Mordecai. Are we together now? And eventually stop what would have been the destruction of the Jews. There was no sword that Esther held, yet she killed everything. Weakness is greater than strength. Weakness is a weapon. It can do many great things. Ladies, let me tell you this. Make up your mind that you are going to preserve your family by sustaining the unashamedness to sincerely submit to your husband and to respect him. You know what respect means? To respect means to hold in high esteem. To respect means to praise. Are we together now? There is no man who will indefinitely continue to love a woman and a wife. I wrote something here. You may want to write it down. While I was preparing, the Holy Spirit just fired this to my spirit and I said, wow, this is instructive. Ready? Love in marriage is unconditional. But stability and fulfillment is highly conditional. Love in marriage is unconditional. But stability and fulfillment is highly conditional the narrative that love a man continues to love a woman and live with her indefinitely regardless of what she becomes regardless of what it it looks like is true but there is an aspect of it that is a lie because coexistence is based on the principle of compatibility and understanding please you, you have to get this you can love someone but not want to live with the person again. Are we together now? Yes. Ladies, your biggest advantage in family life is not competing with your husband. Your biggest advantage in family life is not your becoming a CEO or you're becoming a great woman your biggest advantage is mastering submission i read an article one time that was sent a woman who was married for 80 years maybe some of you have seen the article married for 80 years she lived i think up to 104 years or so and died and she wrote an advice for the ladies of this generation even me when i read what she said i said ah this thing requires the holy ghost though. The woman wrote what 90% of you here will tear it. And yet she said that was the secret to her home of 80 years. When you want to last, 
prepare to last very long. Not long, very long. You cannot survive 80 years in marriage by mistake. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And the woman said, according to the article, that she literally was the one running the home. There is something I can tell you about men. I've been one all my life. I will tell you this. Men are vulnerable to honor, to respect, and to submission. Men honor those above them. They lift up those below them. They fight those who claim equality with them. What men do not want is the competition of equality. When you are higher than men, they will gladly respect you. When you are lower than them, they will gladly lift you. But when you claim equality subconsciously, you bring yourself to a position where you will attract a lot of pain. So you must obtain grace. In the name of Jesus, we want to build homes and family lives that last. And the secret is not in the vastness of information. There are a few essentials that are foundational. Submission. Now, we come from different backgrounds. I'm coming to the men, but ladies, listen to me. We come from different backgrounds that interpret weakness, interpret submission as weakness. The average lady who is submissive today is interpreted as being desperate. And interpret, they interpret as being desperate. You are not showing like you are. The very thing that is the honor of a woman is now being perceived as weakness. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And for the men, this one thing I know from scripture, and from the experience of people with proven family track records that the real needs of a woman is security and emotional fulfillment it is true love in one word for a woman is security security and emotional fulfillment security So every man who intends to build a home must sustain the unashamedness to communicate security and to communicate the requisite level of emotional fulfillment that will give the woman psychological strength. It will not just happen the first two, three, four, five years of marriage. It is a principle that will last. I look at my mom today even in her old age. And I still see and discern that craving of security and emotional fulfillment. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is dangerous when men get married to women and ill treat them like pieces of rags simply because they are now married. She's giving you two, three children, and then it ends. It's the reason why people must ask the Holy Ghost to help them. Because you see, nobody has the power to stay with one person forever you change clothes you change hair you change cars you change jobs you change everything but now you are mandated to stay with one person for the rest of your life it's not natural so there will have to be a grace that continues to keep that person fresh before you regardless of the reality of advancement in age and life and time and so on and so forth are we together now yes i've always given this example when you see a man of say 60 years or 70 years on a wheelchair shaking because he's sick and the wife is standing by him and saying my husband at that point is no longer emotions there has to be a grace from god that makes that woman to still love because nobody that scenario by default is not pleasant women need security they need emotional fulfillment that means what men should do is not just to look for wives they should understand that if I commit myself to marriage 
committing myself to providing security, providing emotional fulfillment. It is true that when men provide security and emotional fulfillment, they provide for the women the fuel that drives them to be supportive, that drives them to give their best and their all towards the central purpose of that home. Gentlemen, listen to me. We must make up our minds that in the name of Jesus, all of the responsibility that we need to submit ourselves to, that make for providing security and providing the requisite level of emotional fulfillment that you will labor under God to make that happen. This is where things like irresponsibility and the rest becomes bad. Are we together now? Yes. The motive that drives many people from marriage is very disturbing because marriage is a lifetime thing. And anything that is not lasting will become a disadvantage eventually. I hope you are getting blessed with what I'm sharing. This is a very powerful Valentine message. So that as you are preparing, you don't just look and say, Ah, I'm not young again. No. My department who is there? Or my this or who is there? Who can I check? And I'm ready for marriage. Just because the church approves your wedding date doesn't mean you are ready for marriage. These are the things that must be in place. With all humility, you can know I'm ready for marriage. I'm ready for marriage because I'm ready to commit to providing security and providing the emotional fulfillment. I'm ready for marriage because I am ready to honor my husband sincerely. I am ready to respect. I am ready to honor him truly. Now, let me say this. The real way to be a blessing is to work on yourself. The real way to be a blessing is not expecting what will make you a blessing. It's working on yourself. I think that most times we have it the other way around. Most ladies believe that when you get that exceptional man, when you get that wonderful man, then you will be happy. Most men believe that when you get that exceptional lady, then you will be happy. Let me tell you this. It is true that the value that is built from within you becomes your advantage. I told you that love in marriage is unconditional, but stability and fulfillment is highly conditional. It will be impossible, look up please, it will be impossible for a couple that eventually are not active contributors of value to themselves to indefinitely continue to remain in joy and be happy to see themselves every day is not true. They will make up their mind that under every condition this marriage will stand. But as far as joy and fulfillment is concerned, it does not just work by default. Listen, please look up. No woman should love her husband just because he brings bread to the table. Just because he's visionary. Just because he's making progress. However, when that man becomes visionary, when that man becomes responsible, it's easy for her knees to touch the ground because there is a basis. Are we together now? There is a support system that encourages her honor. You cannot compare two women. On one side, you have this man who is not responsible. He's, he doesn't care whether the rent is paid. He doesn't care whether the children are fed. All he knows is that whatever will be, will be. And then a man who is meticulously responsible. The approach of their wives to them will not be the same. The woman will say, I will love my husband forever. But you cannot say they are fulfilled at the same level. Are we together? Fulfillment and stability is based on mutual contribution of value. Please write it down. This is very powerful. That mindset of unconditional love just for nothing is going to cost many people a lot because there are many ladies who are not doing anything about their lives. They are not growing. They are not building themselves. They are not building their minds. All they are doing is praying and expecting a visionary, born again, established man to come. Same thing happening for the men. They are not building themselves. They are not building capacity. 
all they are doing is praying for that wonderful lady to come it does not work that way what I'm saying is true you may love me as a person but you will get fulfilled around me only based on the awareness of the value that I continue to provide for you is that true yes sir when it was time for Isaac to bless his sons he said make me venison it, I know you are my son but I need value to come from you to gladden my heart so that something can leave me to you are we together now look up please as the bride of Christ we are all his bride he will never deny you but in terms of usability we are not the same are we together now do you agree with that that God can almost seem to abandon one person and come and stand and invest his attention on another why because of your committal to advancing his purposes the sacrifices you have made to build yourself spiritually that every time you show up in a place you allow so much of God to find expression and God has noted you for being so useful for the kingdom and so he will guard you he will protect you this is how it is no man will indefinitely be proud of his wife forever for nothing no woman will indefinitely be proud of her husband for nothing these are hard truths that many will not tell you but listen your love will remain regardless of what happens but your fulfillment and the stability of your home will be predicated upon the mutual awareness of the value that you provide this is true all staff are staff in a company but there is promotion even within that company and for every promotion there are many benefits that come with it someone can start from level one and in 10 15 years be at the same level this happens psychologically a man can promote his wife in his mind psychologically she's still his wife he still loves her but the depth of honor and committal continues to change every time she's an unfolding of wonder she continues to be an epitome of value and one day the man will stand and say lord thank you for giving me such a woman that's how you know you are valuable so away with that idea that my husband will marry me and no matter what happens the bible says he should love me you are right but you will still feel the heat of being valueless same thing happens to the man you cannot say well i've married and i've married i've paid a dowry and that's all you will be surprised at how draggy and grudgy and sad your marriage will be there will still be love but there will not be fulfillment fulfillment in marriage is highly conditional i love all the workers in this ministry you are precious people and you know that I love you with all my heart. But in all fairness, the level and the extent of contribution at an individual level is not the same. Are we together now? That means that the trust level the, and, and many other factors will not be the same. God loves everybody the same, but he does not trust everybody the same. Value is first virtue and then skill listen every time we talk of value don't just think skill ladies don't just think of the ability to cook food alone and the ability to do all. no 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 your skill comes later the real value of a person is your virtue what is your virtue your closeness to the character of Christ we must continue to fight and contend for growth non-stop every day i want to become a better version of me listen a lady here must challenge herself married or not you must tell yourself i will be so exceptional and so virtuous that my husband will look at me and say thank god for this gift of god given to me same thing with the men that your wife will look at you tomorrow and say thank god for giving me this gift virtue no matter how gifted you are if you do not have virtue and character you will not go far are you hearing what i'm saying now this is very important 
virtue is a measure of your closeness to Christ I always give this analogy that if virtue and skill run a sprint skill will win but if virtue and skill run a marathon virtue will win a day will come when your skill will fail you but it is your virtue that will keep you you will get to places in your life where everybody you meet is equally skillful your edge will be your virtue you will get to a point where everybody is brilliant every man of god is anointed every woman of god is skilled your real virtue see i have seen the power of virtue the lifting power of virtue there are businessmen today who have won contracts worth hundreds of millions of naira and dollar not necessarily because of their skill but something about the the life of their wife their children or their husband you make that company say no you are the kind of people we want to work with you are cautious you are very respectful ladies go back and pray my dear brothers go back and pray thank God for skill but keep skill and cry and say Lord make me exceptional being exceptional is like a magnet it's true there are many skillful people that are not virtuous you get to a point where in your managerial rise company wise in terms of your career you will get to a point where it's not just by your skill and technical and intellectual qualification that you rise again you get to a point where your edge and your advantage becomes the love the manner there are people today you know I met a man great man wealthy man and I saw a wonderful person that was a chef to him and, and I asked and I you know I asked that question I said um, how did you get this person and he looked at me and laughed and said this is one of the nicest elderly woman this is one of the nicest women in the world and it's true when the woman came in within minutes I had fallen in love with this wonderful woman elderly woman and her the the level of of character and manner and cautiousness in speaking the body language of respect and honor is is almost flattering I said my god where did this woman learn this that is virtue there are women visitors come to your house and they vow never to come again why not because you don't have skill but you lack character there are men people do business once with you and vow that they will never because you are you are there is no temperance there is no patience there is no joy there is no self-control all of these virtues they are powerful the world is looking for the fruit of the spirit in men even when they know they don't have it is God blessing us tonight yes sir make sure that you make up your mind that I will be virtuous I will be virtuous virtue is not for women so men when we are talking of virtue don't think and say I hope this lady is hearing no be exceptional look at me conquer the limitation of tribe conquer the limitation of your territory ladies make up your mind and vow before God that I will be an exceptional woman that because of me people will love and honor my husband husbands make up your mind that I will be a man of solid character that because of me they will love. do you know lack of character is what is programming disaster for many children many of us today our parents were exceptionally skillful but they were not virtuous and there are doors that would have cheaply opened today that are closed when you are thinking family life don't think yourself think about your children think about their 10 years think about their 20 years I do not want a situation where my children will not have an opportunity to enjoy a great life because of me and people will say oh you are apostles child no whether spiritually or physically is the reason why we continue to strive by God's grace to create that ladder so that anybody who follows through that ladder already has a road created praise the Lord it is my commitment in ministry 
biologically and so on and so forth that anyone who is connected to this vision and this grace that by God's grace through our sacrifice that you will be able to climb on it that every time you you are purported to be connected to this grace it will open doors for you this is the prayer this is the desire but it will not happen by default and it's not always the issue of anointing virtue can you lay hands on your head in one minute and say, Lord, change what needs to change in my life. Please pray. Change what needs to change in my life. I'm not ashamed, oh God, before you. Pray. I'm open before you, Lord. Do to me what you want. Please make sure you are praying. Here I am in your presence. Do to me what you want. I'm open before you. To me what you are pray lord make me exceptional if you're a dear lady pray lord i'm tired of just having skills certificate should not be the only thing i'm bringing to my home grant me the grace to be exceptional that my life will not close the door for my husband that my life will not close the door for my wife i obtain grace of god from heaven to be exceptional regardless my background grant me grace someone is praying grant me grace i cry to you O god of heaven grant me grace supernatural grace by the spirit Listen, please sit down. Look at me. You must train yourself. Fetch. Make up your mind. When you dress, dress well. When you speak, speak well. Don't see people and look and say, ah, how far? And you are bending somebody. You are not virtuous. You may be human, but you are not virtuous. How many leaders do you want God to bring in your life? With this kind of attitude and you get what i'm saying now don't get up in the morning and pass people anyhow good morning ah, how are we fine god bless you how is today don't see people and pass and say please you greeted me whether i answer no there is no such thing as i am like that men can change are we together there is no such thing as I'm angry. We are in our family, we are like that. Hey, whilst I am angry, even my parents give me chance. It's bad. Change it. That's what the house of God is a place of transformation. Please take seriously what I'm saying. Listen, I continue to pray and ask the Lord to reveal to me the aspects of my life. I'm not ashamed of transition. I'm not ashamed of transformation. That what I am not today, I can be tomorrow. Lord, show me. Thank God for the ones I have, but which ones do I not have? Some of you, you need to work on respect. Some of you, you need to work on honor. You don't have honor for people at all. Some of us, you need to work on your mouth. Your mouth is poisonous. It's like a sword. You can tear down people. It's something to work on. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Some of you need to work on the fortitude for jealousy. Little things. The moment you see a celebration somewhere and it's not you, the senior brother of the prodigal son. Hallelujah. Some of you, you give up very easily. Listen, if you don't love yourself, it's wickedness to want another person to love you. Why should someone love what you hate? Are we together now? Learn to draw your confidence from within. First, who you are in Christ. 
and then second on the strength of the dexterity of your virtue listen you can stamp your feet with all humility as a man and as a woman and say by the grace of god the god of heaven i know we are growing but i can stand to say i'm virtuous it's not pride i told myself and many of you who follow my teachings you've heard me say it my life's goal aside from being a man of god sincerely speaking my life's goal as a person is that god will grant me the grace that i will become a shoulder for many to lean on it is a goal and it is a worthy pursuit in my life i want to be that person who is the first to wrap my hands around people and say god bless you you can make it i want to be the one that when somebody dies i'm the first person to show up and hold you and say don't worry not to say where was your faith where did you keep no 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 make up your mind that in this life you will be virtuous don't just sit down and say why do men not like me why is this it's not just the issue of attack and it's not just the issue of miracle service could this be where the issue is make up your mind i've taught you you can measure your virtue by how much children love you if children hate you believe me believe me something is wrong do you know why let me tell you this because children will test your patience children will force you to stoop down you see how this my children sometimes after service while all of you are standing wanting to see the apostle they don't care they just come and sometimes they don't say daddy bend your ear and i say look at this but it's training and i'm happy it's better to rehearse through them than to mess up in the future <laughs> are we together virtue character you see people you greet people you do something wrong you say i'm sorry not here eh, what is what is it just in you love people your words are cultured you don't speak anyhow and talk anyhow and say i'm just like that no there is intelligence through wisdom the house is built by understanding it is established through knowledge the rooms are filled is god blessing us i will soon go to the last aspect but listen to this is a profitable way of celebrating valentine it is not saying oh god let somebody send me a gift god is giving all of us a valentine gift this night and the valentine gift is sit down sit down and walk on your spirit are we together yeah it's better than a timeout because what you do will build you and make you exceptional nobody runs away from an individual with such an outspoken manifestation of the fruit of the spirit you become like i would say Beulah and Hefzima. there are people who have no regard for elders no regard at all you secure the cause of every old person around you because you do not have that virtue of respect I continue to strive as a person for grace from God I want to be as exceptional as I can be as far as I'm concerned compared to where I'm going I'm just starting I will find them out I will pray them I will study them until it becomes true in my life my only advantage should not be anointing my only advantage should not be revelation you will eventually be the description of God's idea of a man. Can someone have that desire this night? That you will be exceptional. Listen, set a high standard for yourself. Don't just mark your script on an average and set a high standard. When people are saying you are exceptional, you are doing, don't be carried away by those things. Lord, still work on me. In the area of respect, I'm trying, but I score myself with my reference. I give myself 20%. I still need to read a book. I need to go online. I need to study something about character. And you go online and download a message and look at it. I need to learn on this. And you are praying. 
okay let me study esther and let me study Ruth. what was exceptional about these women let me study david let me study solomon let me study isaac and you are building yourself lord make me an exceptional person forget about what is not yet there focus on what god is doing let me tell you it's only a matter of time the world will look at you and within a second was it not the preparation of esther that made her exceptional she passed ahasuerus once once there are times that your destiny will not allow you to pass twice so you have to prepare as though that once is the only time please pray one minute again lord i obtain grace to be an exceptional personality in the name of jesus i conquer the limitation of my background some of us come from families where we have not seen the best model of family life but in the name of Jesus, I make my family life my priority. I make it my priority. And in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I obtain grace from God. I obtain grace from heaven. I'd like you to pray that in Koinonia, we are building families that are exceptional. In the name of Jesus, no matter what your limitation is today, that your 10 years, your 5 years, your 20 years is full of glory, grace, honor, a message and a lesson for the world to see. Exceptional in every way. Someone is praying. Whether you are in a relationship or not, whether you are married or not, lift your voice and pray. Lord, make me. Don't say make my husband. Don't say make my wife. Don't say make my spouse. Pray for yourself. Work on me. Work on my character. Work on that jealousy. Work on that anger. Work on that impatience. Lord, I am not ashamed. This is a threshing floor. I'm not ashamed to be worked upon. Man may laugh at you while God is working on you. But you just continue. It may not be my fault. It may be the background that I came from. It may be the experience I was exposed to. But in the name of Jesus, I kill every excuse. I must be exceptional. I make my family life a priority. Someone is praying. My children will be proud of me. They will call me the first representation of God that they can see. Building me the fruit of the Spirit. Building me virtue. Building me patience. Take away anger. Take away folly from my life. Give me wisdom. Make me outstanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I found out if you focus on changing you, God will settle every other thing. Usually, the key is to want your spouse to change. The key is to want your whoever you are going out with to change. But the key really is you. The more you change, you begin to provoke changes around you. It's a principle. Stop sitting down and reporting your spouse to God and reporting your spouse to everybody and saying, this man, after I gave him five children, is not, yes, he may be wrong, but find a reason to change. There is a way you become so exceptional, it becomes unfair for life to give you certain things. Listen, ladies, let me tell you, there is a way you will work on yourself and build yourself. It becomes unfair in all honesty for certain kinds of people to come to you. Don't sit down where you are and say, I can't marry this kind of person. Me, I'm this. By what standard? Same thing with the men. You can't sit down where you are and just say, I, I believe that only a big... No, sir. Work on yourself. When it is respect, you are there. Character, you are there. Wisdom in communication, you are there. Diplomacy, you are there. Leadership, you are there. Hard work and diligence, you are there. Patience and temperance. Forbearance and forgiveness, you are there. You gather these virtues and they make you exceptional. That is the inner beauty the Bible talks about. Greater than outward beauty. Greater than outward six-pack and being a macho man. Real virtue that lasts. Your face will wrinkle with time. Your hair will fall with time. But your virtue remains seated. Listen, let me find somewhere to run. You would.
thank me for what you are hearing. It may not make sense now. But be exceptional and see. It's not only your husband that will celebrate you. I promise you. The whole world will stand before you. Whether you are a counselor or not. Whether you are a mentor or not. They will come to you. And say I want to be like you. I have observed your life. And have observed that you are an exceptional woman. Here is a thousand dollars. Here is five hundred dollars. Can you pray for me? Whatever made you exceptional. You cannot carry nonsense. and want the world to celebrate you. Do not want people to only come and celebrate the anointing and celebrate revelation there should be more and so I challenge you to join me in that strife of dissatisfaction do not clap too early go back home and write a list of the things you must work on don't be ashamed see let me tell you the moment you become ashamed of growth you will never rise to certain levels i do not want to meet the kings of my destiny and have a reason to be ashamed because i had anointing i had revelation but no virtue that the opening of of your mouth becomes a communication of wisdom some of you impatience has cheated you some of us anger has cheated us some of us foolishness lack of wisdom alone identify those things and pray them if you need to read books buy books jordan is here get books you can go on youtube that is the legitimate ground to load your phone and go on youtube and say for the next two weeks i'm going to study about exceptional women exceptional men it in your heart and God looks at you it's not your fault you came from a background where your father was not the best model of a man your mother was not the best model of a woman maybe it was even a polygamous family maybe it was even a dysfunctional family somewhere you can't be crying forever because of yesterday you must summon the courage to say look what I did not eat may my children eat the joy they did not have If you succeed in ministry and fail in family, you fail. If you succeed in your office and fail in family, you fail. Are we together? The last, and we're done for tonight. I pray that what I'm sharing tonight will be worth your time here. The third most important priority in your life is your assignment just give me a few minutes and we'll pray we're done for tonight your assignment asks us a question why remember the first your relationship with God remember the second your family remember the third your assignment Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 prophecy about Jesus in the volume of the book look at me koinonia it is written of me to do thy will oh God I didn't come to roam around the earth escorting people in destiny for 50 years 60 years 70 years and living sad to the grave Dr. Miles Munro in his lifetime said the richest place is not the gold mine in South Africa, not the oil mines in the east. That the richest place, the wealthiest place is the cemetery where dreams that were never lived are there. Where destiny is books that were never written. Lives that would have been changed. Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me write this down please your greatest fulfillment 
will come from knowing that you have lived your life serving the purposes of God and blessing humanity. I will take it again. Your greatest fulfillment will come from knowing your greatest fulfillment will come from knowing that you have lived your life serving the purposes of God and blessing humanity. Your greatest fulfillment will not come from cars. Truly I tell you, it will not come from houses. It will not come from your ascending the highest echelon of your profession. As good as that is. Your greatest fulfillment will come from knowing that you lived your life serving the purposes of God and blessing humanity. The morning I was in Delta State, I think, when Dr. Miles Munro went to be with the Lord. When the announcement of his death happened, he was headed for a conference somewhere in the region of Bahamas. And then they announced that he was dead, his wife was dead, his assistant dead, most of the people, about six of them dead. Do you know Dr. Burroughs, who now heads um, the Bahamas Faith Ministry International, he looked and he said, continue the conference. He said, if Miles Munro were alive, he would say, never cry for me. So let's do what he would have wanted. I said, my God men who cheated death they were so visionary when he died they checked his documents and they saw different books that were still in progress and some of those books have come out now Abel though dead yet speaketh these are men who cheated death listen let me tell you you can immortalize your impact you can you can choose impact to popularity popularity is not the same as impact Popularity is many people knowing about you. Impact is men being changed because you are alive. Do not mistake in popularity for impact. Thank God for popularity, but I will give it up a thousand times for impact. Listen, many of us right now, God is speaking to you and saying, get back to where I started with you. I started with you. There are dreams that have died. Many of you, the way God started with you, the spirit of God continues to cry. It is important to find your purpose before marriage. It is important to find your purpose before money. Because all these things, as powerful as they are, they can tilt you out of purpose. The first dealing of God in my life was purpose. Then the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Then the kingdom. Then finances. Then it continued like that. I thank God for that sequence. Purpose. The first major book I can remember reading was Discovering Your Purpose. Miles Munro. I read that book and I remember crying. I said, Lord, I will die empty. 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 Why should I live full? completely empty like a drink offering you poured your life sometimes when people see me and say apostle are you not tired i say at this age while i have the strength to move i will move while i have the strength to talk i will talk i will give my best because someday i will not have that strength someday it will be our children reading our legacy when they look they'll say once upon a man a time there was a man called apostle joshua selman we should be able to look from heaven and be proud of what we did. You are not called to do everything, but you are called to do something serious. And it is, listen, you have to make up your mind to wake up on this Valentine night and say, in the name of Jesus, I will have to wake up to my destiny. Every time I come for Koinonia, as soon as I come out of the car, I look at all the people and sometimes tears fill my eyes. When I travel to go for ministrations, and sometimes you cannot imagine how tired I am, I just stand and I pray. I say, Lord, I don't even have the time to pray. Just show me your mercy and show me your grace. Visit your people. Thank God the, 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 the message I've prepared. Sometimes I do not even have the time to revise it and all of that. I just say, Lord, I give you all the praise. And sometimes I'm so tired. 
and I'm tempted to say, what is all this about? Then I just remember, ah, spending your life bringing glory to his majesty. This is what we do. You don't have to be in ministry to do it. It's a mindset that is bigger than looking for money. It's a mindset that is bigger than looking for fame. Fame is important, but it's mundane when it stands side by side impact. If nobody knows you, listen, Matthew Seller lived about 767 or 69 years or so. 969. And nobody can remember anything about him. And Jesus lived for 33 and a half years. And the world cannot forget you. There was a woman called Anna the prophetess. The Bible does not tell us so much. Except that her assignment was to stay in the temple. And pray Jesus from heaven to earth. And when she saw it, she said, now let my soul find rest. I have seen the consolation of Israel. Listen. You know your impact by the vacuum you create when you are not there. If nobody misses your absence, it means your presence is not a blessing. This is true. Purpose gives meaning and value to everything you do. Write it down, please. Purpose gives meaning and it gives value to everything you do. Marriage has a purpose. Money has a purpose. Children have a purpose. Prosperity has a purpose. Let me tell you, the real issue with this our generation is that most of our desires are not connected to purpose. We want to marry for marriage's sake. We want to make money for the sake of respect and pride. We want a name for ourselves. Most times people come, I want anointing. What is the purpose tied to it? Purpose is what gives your pursuit for money. It is purpose that makes your pursuit of money not materialism. Because now there is an object behind it. Every time you want to do anything in life, ask yourself why? To what end? Acts chapter 26. Let's look at Paul's manifesto of his purpose. We're going to read the first 18 verses. Be patient with me. We're rounding up. Then Agrippa, this was Paul before Agrippa. Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for yourself. And then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. Read on. I think myself happy King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, as touching all things whereof I am accused of the Jews. Uh -huh. Especially because I know you are an expert in this and that. Go to verse 7. Verse 7, please. It says, unto which promise our twelve tribes instantly serving God, day and night, you know, hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Right? Read on. It says, why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus. Now, he's talking about his history now. Are we together? Which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priest. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. This is the past of a man. And I punished them often very in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceeding mad, exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Uh huh. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus, everybody look at this, with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. Uh -huh. We are reading to 19. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking to me, saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecuted. Uh -huh. But rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. I have appeared unto thee for this purpose 
what is the purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto you delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I shall send thee to open their eyes is an assignment and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me where upon O King Agrippa that's my prayer for you I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision listen every time you do not leave out your assignment you cost someone somebody's destiny will suffer when you do not rise to what God has ordained for you to do are we together what is your purpose and your assignment your contribution to kingdom advance the role you have been mandated to play in that thy kingdom come project that universal project of the spearheading of the influence and the power of god now please look up not everybody as far as purpose is concerned will have a pioneering grace not everybody will be a general overseer not everybody will be a man of God. Not everybody will be an apostle, a prophet, and all of that. But your assignment is to find your role. It doesn't necessarily mean you must have a platform to your name. The most important thing is your role. The role that you have to play. Let me tell you, there are many purposeless people that continue to loiter around the face of the earth. Waiting for either a job or marriage or geographic relocation to give them a sense of meaning in their lives make up your mind Lord what did you bring me here to the earth for I cannot be escorting people all around for others God can tell you like Moses have raised you to be a savior for others God can raise you like Aaron and say hold the hands of Moses while he performs that function for others, you will be the 70 elders that your spirit will come upon. For others, you will be the Joshua's. For others, you will be the Esther's who need to rise to the throne. Esther's assignment was first marriage. Her victory was dependent on marriage. Are you seeing that now? It, that is the reason why it is important to find out purpose before marriage. Because if you now find out that your purpose contradicts what you are now doing, you are in trouble. God will have to make do with what is there. Is God blessing someone here? Our society is full of idle people. They wake up in the morning and they do not do anything. And I say this respectfully, especially for the gentlemen. There is, there is, there is, there is nothing that pinches my heart like seeing a young, vibrant gentleman confused and wallowing in purposelessness strolling around in the morning not knowing where you are going there is nothing that is worth your waking up there is nothing that is worth your sitting down what are your plans for today nothing is there anything for me uh, okay let's go out and you you can't live your life like that you close your eyes you find out you are 40 years close your eyes again you are 50 years close the last one you are 60 years every time I celebrate my birthday it is this one vision I have my piles of books from the time God began to speak to me and I open them lo I come in the volume of the book it is why when I sit down sometimes when I sleep I just get up and say Mr. Man you have messages to prepare there are lives that need to be changed stand up quickly there is work to, to be done oh there's some prayers to do because there is a meeting to attend and there are destinies depending on you. Shabakatosia. Change them, oh God. Lay your hands and say, Lord, show me. Show me. Show me. Reveal to me. What is my role in your program? I'm tired of escorting people up and down, left, right and center and not finding a basis for fulfillment. Someone is praying. What is my role in your program? Let 
Listen, look up. A few things and then we're going to pray. Please look up. Did you know that your assignment is divided into seasonal mandates? Do not forget this. Your assignment is divided into seasonal mandates. There are people who are workers in this ministry today. But the grace upon them, tomorrow they are going to have their churches. Tomorrow they are going to have their parishes. But in this season, their assignment is to be faithful as far as working and learning is, is concerned. Are you seeing that now? Yes. Nothing gladdens my heart when I have to talk with the workers and sometimes I see the leaders and I see them committed in doing something that is worth it. Listen, it's a cost to wake up in the morning and not have a justification for spending your day. You wake up in the morning, nothing to do. So what's my today about? I don't know. You watch movie, you go on internet, you come back and watch movie, you go on internet, you read a book, gossip here and there, sit down, eat food, go out, come back in the evening, yawn yourself to sleep. It's a useless life. You must make up your mind. Visionary people have to beg sleep to wait. Sleep, wait. Give me two more hours. Because what is burning in my spirit? Do you know sincerely, let me tell you, there are times I wake up in the morning and the last thing I can remember is, okay, I woke up, maybe I went to bed by five, I wake up around nine and I'm busy. I, and the next thing I'm checking and it's nine in the evening. And I'm like, my God, what in the world is this? What in the world is this? I have so much to do. Before you finish learning and writing and praying and doing all of that, you want to pray, you close your eyes, time is gone. But for many of you, because of lack of vision, you pray for five minutes, there is no burden on you. Are we together? Nothing that compels your prayer. Lord, I thank you. You are the Lion of the tribe of Judah. You are the Rose of Sharon. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my parents. Thank you for my loved ones. I give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Of course, that's all if you, if you are not a visionary person. But there are times that praying for koinonia alone can take you a whole day. You take the departments one by one. Lord, worship team. Shaka bakutu siyada. Give them songs from heaven. Give them visions from heaven. Take another department. Before you do three, the whole day has gone. The food is kept in front of you and you cannot even remember that there is food in front of you. If there is nothing that has that grip and that obsession on you, it's a sign you are not living a visionary life. Believe me when I tell you, after service now, I'm seeing people here, when I go back home, it's not sleep. Oh. Sleep? I receive an average of 500 to 600 text messages every day aside from calls and some of them are you and you are angry that I don't respond to it right now my phone my phone is never off never never except maybe they are removing the the, 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 the battery or something maybe changing sim or something it is never off because of the noise of the pressure and the burden of ministry the last time i had music from my phone like ringtone was 2012. i put my phone on silent permanently till tomorrow what do you think ministry is what do you think leadership is ah god is just lifting them please receive grace to be serious in the name of jesus christ 11 o'clock you are already sleeping the last thing god told you to do two years ago is still there you've not developed it you are not reading any book i hope you are not angry no book on your table nothing on your laptop i check your phone and all i see is just browsing and gisting you mean you don't do any other thing please receive grace to settle down there are some of you, what you need to do now, the 5,000 God bless you with, use 2,000 and go and buy CDs and settle down. Make up your mind, I will not sleep, I will not wake up later than 8 o'clock for no reason again. Buy an alarm clock in the market. Are we together? That's right.
myself you must be disciplined for the sake of your destiny myself you must be disciplined this unnecessary hunger that distracts tell yourself in the name of jesus i'm not fasting but i will buy a drink food be disciplined the sabbath was created for man and you study okay today i'm studying on faith and you don't let any devil distract you you are reading on faith you listen to three do you know there are people who are not even workers here they listen to an average of three to five koinonia messages i listen to an average of three koinonia messages every day without fail i'm the one that preached it all and i listen to it again with my heart open there are things if i do not do in a day my eyes will not see sleep please listen i'm opening up my heart so that we'll be serious this thing is not luck you don't get the anointing just by wish no you don't grow into dimensions by saying a season just came do you know the amount of prayer investment it takes to really carry power spiritual power that works there are weeks that i have an average it happens most time in january there was a time i had 18 sermons in one week and you must prepare them my brothers and my sisters i destroy the spirit of laziness from your life this night and i pray for you that one of the things you will learn in this valentine some of you god is calling you into the area of business but you will not sit down sit down sit down buy books read I gave us three books to read. Some of you don't even, you've not even seen how the cover looks like. It's carelessness. When I'm traveling, whether it's to Abuja or anywhere, or almost all through the journey, it is worship and a sermon and something. I don't have that time to waste. I may be as sleepy as whatever, but I'm listening. I can't waste three hours, four hours, five hours. I'm either charging my spirit in worship or I'm listening to something. Listen, life is time tagged. You will not always have the energy and the time. And there is a time when you should have prepared and built certain capacities. Whether you are ready or not, life will open the, the stage. So build capacity now. Don't you know that when you get married, you may not have that time to pray the way you want again because you are now under your own authority. No matter how prayerful you are. So now that you have the luxury to roll on the ground, thank God, don't just keep saying, Lord, when will my husband come? L let me build capacity. I don't know what it means to pray when you are pregnant. I don't know what it means to pray when you pray now. Eat for the journey is far. There are men, you don't know what it means to serve God with pressure of school fees. So now that you are alone, you are not paying anybody school fees. You will write sermons today that you will use for the next 10 years. There are messages I still go back and make reference to them. I wrote some of those messages sometimes 2004, 2005, 2006. I just developed them and build on them. Something must consume your heart. Something must burn within your spirit. Whether you are a man of God or not. Apostle, this is the goal I've set this year. What are you doing? I want to become a sound expert. Tell me what you are doing now for it. Nothing. One day, I'm sure that Koinonia will organize training of sound people. That is the language of carelessness and laziness. I want to become an exceptional mother. I believe it is a call. Show me what book you are reading show me the exceptional people i want to have a great foundation today that will raise great women and great show me what model you are studying now i should come and meet you walking when you are visionary it's easy to say no to many things ah apostle can i come and visit you i'm sorry i'm busy but you cannot you can't sit down people come and say borrow me your television and you're visit. let me play a movie because you are free completely free i have taught you receive grace to master the night this night time is a good time to sleep but it's also a good time to make spiritual investments i can tell you this for some reason the spirit of revelation is heavy upon men in the night when people slumber around and you are just walking around and just saying lord thank you thank you for the next level 
this year now that there's a lot of expansion and a lot going on in ministry you cannot tell i travel i return i'm tired there are things i'm praying lord let's make sure that we're walking with your will there's a department to meet there are people to meet there's a this and that and that no laziness you can't be eating 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 and you sit down you sleep you get up when you are truly idle you become the devil's workshop I hope you know purpose is not looking for money except if looking for money leads to purpose purpose is finding that which can bring impact to the lives of men that's purpose looking for food to eat is not purpose except if my purpose of eating it is to find the energy to fulfill God's assignment please everybody write Lord reveal to me my assignment in this season go and pray it as a prayer point reveal to me oh god my assignment imagine if bishop oyedeko did not find his place in destiny imagine if papa Ia deboe did not find his place in destiny imagine if fathers like W.F. Kumuyi did not find their place in destiny. Imagine if there were no Benny Hins. Imagine if there were no T.L. Osborns. Imagine the world without this man. Imagine the world without men like Nelson Mandela. I made up my mind that I will give my best for God and for this generation. Let it be that I did my best. My best, Lord, is everything I have. My best, Lord, I give all I have to you. My best, Lord, is all I have to give. My best, Lord, I give all I have to you. I wrote this song many years ago as a commitment. It was a vow and a covenant. Lord, if I die doing what I'm doing, that it is with honor that I died for you. For me now to live is Christ and to die is gain. It's not a confession. It's true. That's why I was, hey! I don't panic. I'm already dead. Dead people don't die twice. It is appointed unto men to die once. I will spend this life God has given me serving. You do not know the honor that I have serving this generation and serving the purposes of God. The greatest thank you is not an alert. The greatest thank you is not fame. It's not a name. The greatest thank you is Apostle. Thank God you were born. That because of you, my life is changed. Because of you, my father is saved. Because of you, I found direction. Sometimes I hold those things. I'm not a very emotional person. But tears just come down my eyes. And I say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for making me a gift to this generation. You can be Barabbas. You can be Jesus. The choice is yours. You can be the two thieves standing, hanging on the cross. Or you can be Jesus. I made up my mind that I will give God and this generation my best. He gave his best for me. I will give my best for him. So when you see me travel and you see me do the things that I do. Oh dear generation, hear me. It is not because we are necessarily exceptional. There is a fire that burns from within us. It is the fire to see the globe set a blaze we will set this generation on fire in a way that has not been seen we will contribute our quota to kingdom come and when all is said and done we will stand like the fathers who have gone ahead of us and salute the earth and make sure that we leave a legacy that outlives us and then we'll wave the earth goodbye with honor be wise in your living don't live like a fool live as though time is passing You've celebrated five birthdays in purposelessness. From the time God started nudging you, wake up. Wake up. Arise! 
thou that sleepest it is time to wake up god is calling you to be a kingdom financier you don't become a kingdom financier at 70 it's not a blessing so go and buy all the books on finances not for the purpose of having money for the purpose of having the tools that it will take to minister oh apostle god is calling me to be a man of god that's not the time to loiter around looking for invitations that's the time to fast when others are not fasting that's the time to pray when people are sleeping not apostle they should give me bible study in one church pray that my pastor will see me no that's the time to settle down premature manifestation will kill you God tells you your assignment is to be a man of God's wife. That's not the time to say, where is he? What is your business? You stay and build yourself. Lord, I will need patience. I obtain grace. God tells you you are going to be an evangelist traveling around the world. You should be casting the demons that cause plane crash. You should be praying. What do, what do you mean by there's nothing to do? You settle down and pray. Lord, in advance, I prophesy to the partners that will have to stand by me. May I not be stranded because of finances. Let it not be that while I'm preaching the gospel, my children don't have their school fees paid. I receive the spirit of revelation. I need to preach two or three messages per day. I obtain grace from God. I will be persecuted in ministry. I will be misunderstood in ministry. Lord, build my capacity now so that when those times come, I will not be distracted. My best Lord is everything I am. My best Lord, I give all I have to you. You made me great. You made me special. You made me great. I give all I have to you. You made me great. You made me special. You made me great. I give all I have to you. My best Lord is everything I have. My best Lord, I give all. Valentine give to you. Embrace God. Embrace family. Embrace destiny. And I show you a winner. Many things will come to clamor for your attention. But I show you the things that really matter. When all is said and done, it is God, family, destiny. Not say give us bread today king of the Jews and they will say crucify you tomorrow I show you what is necessary and unnecessary Valentine is only useful when wisdom is added to you if all you do is to eat and receive presents as good as it is and you do not have an opportunity to grow destiny wise you are not making progress I prayed over this and I asked the Lord that when I teach it it will mean something to someone that you can make up your mind. Some of you will need to go home this night and just sit down outside with a notebook and start writing things. Lord, why am I here? Show me the scripture that represents the anthem of my life. I cannot wait for marriage to define my relevance. I can't sit down waiting for a man to appear in my life so that I will find what I'm here for. Lord, why was I born? And you pray from the depth of your heart. Lord, you have called me to be a man of God. What do I need to learn? What dimension of ministry are you giving me? And God says, I've called you to be a prophet. I've called you to be an evangelist. And you get books about the prophetic ministry. And you are praying. I've called you to the ministry of help. And you begin to study. Lord, give me patience. Give me forbearance. Give me the grace to love people. Oh, I'm calling you to be a great pastor. Lord, give me the heart of a shepherd. The grace to love people whether they love me back or not. You are preparing for destiny. Hold the hands of someone who are going to pray. My best Lord is everything I have. My best Lord, I give all I have to you. My best. Me 
made me great You made me special You made me great I give all I have to you Prayer point number one Lord, anything that will steal your place in my life, cut it out of my life now. Please lift your voice and pray. Whatever will take your place in my life, what shall separate us from the love of God? Strengthen my spiritual connection. Oh God of heaven, strengthen my spiritual connection. In life and death, I will serve you all my life. Nothing will take me from you. Let nothing take the hunger, O oh God. Let nothing steal the passion, O oh God. Is someone praying? Para sala shalanda sala katosia. Prayer point number two. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Now listen. Whether you are married or not, our time is gone. But for the sake of God and for the sake of your family, whether here or not, I want you in the next two minutes to cry. Married or not, Lord, I pray for my wife. I pray for my husband. I pray for my children. Prophesy and declare. I decree and declare that my family life will work. Someone is prophesying. model families in the name of Jesus exceptional homes by the spirit of the living God homes that are a replica of heaven all wise please pray pray for your children born and unborn I prophesy ahead over them. Champions, warriors, men of fire, women of grace. Zakataleka tapraska baranta shalata. I separate them from the weaknesses of territory, from the weaknesses of background, from the limitations of ancestry. I cut them away from the limitations of tribe. And geographic territory I craft them into a new order a new spirit a new tribe someone is praying pray over your children they are taught of the Lord great is their peace pray for your home blessed is the man that feared the Lord that delighted greatly in his commands his seed shall be mighty upon earth the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. His righteousness endures forever. Pray. Pray for yourself. Lord, make me a man of character. Make me a woman of character. Exceptional. Exceptional. A dispensing of the virtue of heaven. Regardless my background. Regardless my past, regardless my limitations, is someone praying, I obtain grace, exceptional, grace, exceptional, an exceptional man, an exceptional woman, skilled and virtuous, valuable, a contributor to the growth of my home. Hallelujah. Now listen please, we are still praying for family, I'd like you to pray, Lord my children must be better than me, they must be greater than me, my children will never be the 
the worst fashion of me. Where I failed, may they not fail. Where I could not cross, may they cross. Someone is praying. Be selfless enough to pray. May my children become extensions of my legacy. Please prophesy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now we're going to pray. Listen. There are many of us, you cannot move forward even with regards to family life because when you look at your background, dysfunctional family, you look at your past, it's not a testimony that you desire. You look at the future, it looks bleak. And you allow the devil fool you into thinking you will become just like your parents you are going to cancel it there is a new grace a new wine a new covenant i love my parents i honor them but where they failed lord i obtained the grace of an eagle to rise and move past it lift your voice and pray pray growing up i saw poverty Lord, may I be the one to change it. Growing up, I saw limitations. I obtained grace to change it by the Spirit. I'm a sign and a wonder. A sign and a wonder. Please, I'd like you to pray that in the name of Jesus, your home will stand. In the name of Jesus, your home will stand. No divorce, no separation. In the name of Jesus, you are standing as a model by the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Now, the last prayer point, there's one minute now. You're going to pray. If you're married, you're still going to pray for your wife and your husband. You're not married, you're going to pray. Lord, please bring a man or a woman in my life that fears you. Let it not be that it's marriage that took me down. Please pray it all and pray it seriously. Lift your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus, pray. Pray. Call forth a husband that loves God. That will serve God with all his life. A responsible man who fears God. Call forth a woman of virtue. A mother in Israel. Is somebody praying? Cry unto God, the giver of all good things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The last prayer point. Listen. You're going to pray for purpose. Some of you, from this prayer, God will show you dreams. Some of you, God will make references to books that you have that are locked up in your house. And say, go back and carry that book of 2001. That book of 2005. Open it. There is something I told you to write there that you need to revisit. You are going to pray. Lord, like fire from heaven, the blueprint of my destiny, let it rest on me in this season. Lift your voice and pray. Cry to the Lord. Lord, let me not escort others in destiny and live a visionless and a purposeless life. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me, as it is written of me. Shadapakato prete kete baladus. 
ade balando skala pratis kade prati di barang Alla prende che parucci sopra di che ti va la rapa la rosa. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take the cold, touch my lips, here I am. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take a call. Make sure you are still praying. Kapos kali prati di barat. Apa rujuk super? Lord of Lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. King of kings, Lord of Lords, you are faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. Praise the bread of life, Emmanuel, God with us, the one who, who saves. We praise the cup of life, that glorious spring that washes our sin. Away. Even so, come, Yeshua, come. Even so, come, take your bride away. How my soul longs to see your face, my Lord, even so, even so, come Yeshua, come. Even so, will you come? Yeshua come go ahead and worship him in prayer even so come and take your bride away how my soul longs to see your face my Lord even so even so Come, Yeshua, come. Nina Kawo Yabo, Sir King Salama. Nina Kawo Do Kakae, Sir King Salama. Nina Kawo Yabo. Sir King Salama, Sir King 
Express your heart to the Lord. Fix your gaze on Jesus. Thank Him for His mercy. Thank Him for His love. The wonder working power of Jesus in the midst of His people. We owe you our lives, oh God, and we owe you our gratitude. From the rising of the sun, even till the going down of the same, we declare that the name of the Lord alone be glorified. We extol you, Lion of the tribe of Judah, mighty God. Sobari it's a realm of your glory, it's a realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on the wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. Oh, 
Kalabarus committed to creating the atmosphere for your presence to be made manifest. Don't be tired. These are the kinds of spirit interactions that bring power. We bless you. Go ahead and worship him. Offer unto him the cows of your lips, a sacrifice of praise, a declaration of worship. You mean this much to us, oh God. As individuals and as a ministry, you mean this much. Who but you is able to lift a man? Who but you is able to bless? Unless you open our eyes, we cannot see. Unless you quicken our ears, we cannot hear. Unless you grant us understanding, we cannot comprehend. Spirit of the living God, this is your atmosphere created by hunger, sponsored by passion, maintained by commitment. Bless him in the spirit. Pray in the spirit, sing in the spirit. Do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the spirit. In Psalms, hymns. Spiritual song, Psalms, hymns, spiritual song, Psalms, hymns, spiritual song, making melody in your heart to the Lord. Thank you for the miracles 
for the testimonies you have proven again and again that you are dependable you have proven again and again that indeed you are the mighty God you are the mighty God the great I am hallelujah silent in his presence just the instruments just play something just soak in that glory something just play minors not not this just be still for a minute i'm teaching you something it's a culture it's a training there are times that when you worship you just need to be quiet then you let him speak he will speak in pictures he will speak in words he will speak by moving your understanding. This is how we interact. These are the mysteries of the secret place. Just let him speak. It's more than an impartation. It's him speaking back to you. Don't change the sounds, guys. Be sensitive. You were playing something else. Let him speak to your spirit. That's why you came. You think it's just an impartation, but it's not an impartation. It's the power of his voice upon your spirit, man. Answers coming from heaven. Answers coming from heaven. Now arise, O oh Lord. Don't sing with me. Would you come? to your resting place you and the ark of your might and then we will rejoice as we clothe in your righteousness we celebrate your love just be silent and soak in that presence For your name is holy, your soul, holy are you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 From the rising of the sun Right until it's going down Just be still, we will sing Of the mercies of the Lord We will preach Of the favor of the Lord We will shout Of the goodness of the Lord we will speak of the power of the Lord.
just be still and know believe me make no mistake to allow the devil make you think you are wasting your time you are getting more than a sermon this is koinonia it's an interaction of the spirit a quickening your weakness being changed by his strength mm. Holy fire, burn upon my altar. From within me, spirit to take over. Holy fire, burn upon my altar. Holy fire, burn upon my altar from within me spirit to take over holy fire burn upon my altar holy fire holy fire Holy fire burn up on my altar. Holy fire burn up on my altar. From within me, spirit to take over. Holy fire burn up on my altar. Elados, Shalados, Kabalos, Elabos, and Aharusa Kapita. Let the weight of your glory fall, let it cover all the earth. The Spirit of the Lord is mighty in this place. Let the weight of your glory fall, it's bringing healing healing the healing anointing is strong in this place incurable diseases under the atmosphere of his shakaina salamaranda katos lagatos taking away weaknesses taking away yokes and burdens let it cover all the earth Let it cover all the earth. Beauty for ashes. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called the oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he might be glorified. A few minutes and you'll be seated. I'm taking away burdens. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking. Taking away burden. He's rolling away the reproach of your past. Rolling away the reproach of your past. The Spirit of the Lord is rolling away the reproach of your past. That this proverb will no longer be used in your life. Shalabaranda gadabalakotosiadai. The Lord is rolling away reproach. Tears, physical tears are coming out of my eyes. And the Lord is saying, this is the captivity of a family being rolled away. Rolled away. I'm sensing the burden of a family. A family that has been under captivity. And the Lord is saying in this season, he's rolling it away. Rolling it away. This is the cry of the spirit. Just let God do what he's doing. Let it be rolled away, O God. Let it be rolled away, O God. Let it be rolled away, O God. The cry of a family. 
coming to the ears of the Savior, the Redeemer. He's rolling it away. A widespread plague of sickness. A widespread plague of failure. A widespread plague of death in his presence. Mighty, mighty presence. Resting on everything that is not the Christ. Hello, him you Hello, you opening my eyes and I'm seeing an activation of the gift of the spirit this is what the Lord is ministering to me I'm seeing dormant spiritual investments finding expression graces that were once in use and for some reason just went down it's like there is an opening in the spirit and suddenly I'm seeing gifts being activated the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the deciding of spirit, revelatory gifts, being activated by the spirit of the Lord. Being activated by the spirit of the Lord. you see what this session is doing is it is killing the flesh the flesh hates what is happening this is one of the ways that the flesh is crucified by exposing the flesh to the light of his power it's an uncomfortable position for the flesh just a few minutes and you'll be seated this is not the making of a man it's the Holy Ghost doing something to your spirit man yeah, na, 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 na. Yeah. Yeah. 
There are some of you, the Lord is giving you new tongues, new prayer languages, new tongues, new tongues, new tongues, new tongues. It's giving you new tongues, new tongues. You will no longer pray like you have prayed before, a new language. A new frequency in the spirit. This is what is happening. I'm seeing coals of fire being put upon the tongues of people. New tongues. New tongues. That's what the spirit of the Lord is revealing to me. New tongues. Utterances of the spirit. Utterances you have never heard before. Utterances you have never known before. Some of you, they will start right here at Koinonia. And for others, it will be at your secret place. Some, it will be at your prayer group. Just fix your eyes upon Jesus for the next one or two minutes. The oil of favor, the oil of favor, the oil of favor. The oil of favor. I hear this in my spirit. I echo it and I hear it in my spirit. The oil of favor. The oil of favor. Lord, let it flow like a river. Everywhere within this building. Everywhere within the overflows. Online, the oil of favor that you will be drenched and you will be soaked in this oil leaving this service to a realm of extraordinary fruitfulness by the favor of God hallelujah just close your eyes if you can. Just focus on Jesus. One minute. Please don't be distracted. Whether Whatever is happening around you is none of your business. Just be focused. Hear what he says to you. Hear what he says to you about your life. Hear what he says to you about your relationship with him. Hear what he says to you about your family. Hear what he says to you about the solution hear what he says to you hear what he says to you about the pain hear what he says to you about your ministry you can trust what you are hearing now you can trust what you are hearing now it can't be the devil speaking to you not after this atmosphere you can trust what you are hearing now for some of you he's saying i am still god i am still god in spite of all that has happened in your life i am still god i am still god i am still god you have come too far to doubt i am still god I am still God. Spirit of the living God, 
evermore we desire you you have called this place koinonia a place of your presence a place of victory a place of renewal a place of revival a place of restoration Restoration of fire, restoration of hunger, restoration of grace, restoration of patterns, restoration of covenants. We pray tonight. That Jesus and him alone be glorified in this place. And Father, I pray, if this is all you do tonight, we are more than grateful for giving us an experience that shifts us to realms unimagined. This is what separates us from noisemakers. This is the factor of the spirit. Evermore, spirit of the living God, this remains your place. Evermore, evermore. Replace any man as you will and as you wish. Shift us to whatever direction we are that malleable. We pray that as men look at men, they will not see men. But they will see Jesus in the midst of the lampstands, in the midst of the candlestands. We are giving ourselves wholly to this because we know that our profiting will appear unto all. We are tapping, O oh God, into the ancient mysteries that you taught our fathers. You taught they that went ahead of us that when men stay in your presence, they can renew their strength like the eagle. They can mount up with wings. They can run and not be tired. They can walk and not be weary. We exchange our weaknesses tonight with your strength. We exchange our frustrations. We exchange our limitations. We exchange our pain. We exchange our fears. We exchange our doubts. We exchange our confusions. Because worship is a place of exchange. More than a place of reception. Let everything that is not you in us, leave us. Let everything that is not you in us, be exited out of our lives. Let everything that is not you in us, leave. And let that space be filled experientially with more of you. More of your light, more of your power, more of your wisdom a deeper hunger for fellowship more than ministry more than preaching more than leadership more than prosperity more than fame more than money may we desire you remain the object of our pursuit remain the object of our passion remain the jurisdiction of our pursuit Thank you, Father. We bless you, we honor you, and we worship you. Forever be glorified. This is Koinonia. 
you have called it by its name you have embraced it by understanding let this place remain a tabernacle of your presence you can do without us but please carry us along there are infinite replacements but we pray by the message of the God of heaven let this place remain a center where your eyes continue to behold let this place remain a place of mysteries let this place remain a place of encounters let this place remain a place of miracles signs wonders let this place remain a place of bread bethel understanding the richness the abundance of your supplies let this be the wealthy place the place where you exchange our limitations for the supplies of heaven let this place remain the place where men meet with God we vow that forever you will be glorified we vow that forever we will only lift up the anthem of your name we hide behind the cross we hide our flesh we hide every personal agenda and we pray that Jesus and him alone will be seen experienced and known thank you father thank you for your atmosphere in the name of Jesus Christ amen please sit quietly if you can God bless you whoa Just help those under the anointing. Very powerful time. Very, very powerful time. Every once in a while, God will show up in these dimensions. Those under the anointing, just help them. Just keep them somewhere quiet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A few minutes with us tonight and then we will pray I want to encourage everyone to continue to press towards the things of God um, it's very easy to be distracted in this kingdom it's very easy to lose focus to major on the minors let's settle down please those inside outside and minor on the majors but God brings us here to help us even by his spirit I want to share with you something very briefly that I believe is very powerful and very instructive and then we'll have the opportunity to pray if you're with me please say amen, amen. it's a revelation that God put in my heart is for koinonia but then it's for the body of Christ and I believe that the Lord will help us tonight. Why prophecies fail? Please write. And let's discuss within a few minutes a very powerful understanding that God gave me. Why prophecies fail? First Timothy chapter 1, please and verse 18 believers continue to struggle with the tragedy of unfulfilled please listen please listen unfulfilled prophecies praise the lord The Lord is speaking to someone in overflow one. It will not happen as you have seen. I don't know what I'm saying, but the Lord is just asking me to speak it just like that. It will not happen as you have seen. I believe that tonight's um, message may be why the anointing 
is moving in this dimension it will not happen as you have seen it will not happen as you have seen it will not happen as you have seen in the name of Jesus Christ praise the Lord so many believers continue to battle with unfulfilled prophecies here and there men and women of God all over the world continue to speak the counsel of God the word of God to individuals but then we notice that people receive these prophecies and most now let me tell you sincerely most of the prophecies we receive never come to pass and tonight is an attempt to very quickly show us what may be wrong and then also to reveal to us the place of the prophetic listen very carefully and the place of the word of god because there are people for instance who have seen things in visions in dreams or have received prophetic words from anointed people genuine people filled with the holy spirit and these prophecies may not have been consistent with the dealings of god some of them may have been negative prophecies and they have remained helpless believing that just because a man anointed by god accredited by god made a pronouncement and utterance to them it meant that nothing could be done about it and then they sit down and allow those prophecies happen so we're dealing with the prophetic today and i pray that god will grant us understanding so let's go very quickly our time is gone read with me verse 18 everyone want to read this charge i commit unto thee son timothy uh-huh according to the prophecies which went before on thee that thou war a good warfare stop there paul is speaking to his son in the gospel timothy and he's saying that some prophecies were released to go ahead of you now understand what he's saying he's encouraging him he's saying mr man be assured of this that we have released prophetic words to go ahead of you but he tells him that by them those prophecies that have gone ahead of you you will war a good warfare hallelujah so it is possible that prophetic words can be sent ahead of a person please listen very carefully whether in ministry in family life business career whatever it is that the prophetic is real now let me balance this up front even before we continue our discussion there are people here and there who probably because of their religious affiliations, their denominations, or the kind and the structure of mentorship they may have received, may have been trained by well-meaning, sincere men and women of God to ignore or despise the prophetic, to despise prophecy. We find people, some persons have been very vocal about the fact that the prophetic is not useful in today's church and all versions of sarcasm has been communicated as regards the prophetic the bible says very clearly and i think that i will just um solve that once and for all in first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 20 let the word of god speak once and for all first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 20 if you're a christian please read with me one to read despise not prophesying one more time this is a warning do not despise prophesying do not despise the place of the prophetic in your journey to knowing god and living a meaningful life that means that the bible recognizes that there is a place for the prophetic okay so we establish that up front that there is a place for the prophetic and the bible says to not despise it that means that if you find yourself in an environment 
where yourself or the leaders around you continue to despise prophesying. You don't have to fight anybody. You don't have to create trouble. But let it be a settled conviction within you that in the journey of a believer, there is a place. Listen carefully. There is a place for the prophetic. There is a place for prophesying. Are we together? When it comes to the prophetic, the Bible lets us know that even scripture is prophecy. Do you agree with me? Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19, please. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. It says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. When you read in context coming down, you will know that he was speaking about scripture as a more sure word of prophecy. It says, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. Now listen very carefully. So he's telling you that there are prophesyings that have to do with the speakings of men under the influence of the holy spirit are we together he's telling you that there is another kind of prophesying that is the revelation as captured in scripture he says to also take heed as well so do not despise the prophesyings that has to do with the speakings of men and that you do not despise the prophesying that has to do with the authority of scripture the prophecy of scripture we call it are we together now yes the character of these two dimensions of prophetic operations are not the same please listen very very carefully so the bible is prophetic the words that are written in scripture are prophetic the words that are spoken by a man under the influence of the spirit of god to you real time is also prophetic but in terms of superiority please listen they are not all the same although engineered by the spirit of god the bible lets us know please look at me that the prophecy of scripture and the prophecy that comes from a vessel, they are all together to the edifying of the saints, but they do not hold the same weight in the spirit. You have to learn this. The word more sure means more reliable, more dependable. Are we together? It attempts to show you the excellency of the prophecy of scripture. That means that if given an option for both of them, the Bible gives you its recommendation in terms of reliability and certainty. It tells you to depend on the prophecy that comes from scripture. Are we together? There are many reasons for this and that's, that's, not, that's not where I'm going tonight. My goal is to show you why prophecies fail and then to connect a few things and we'll pray. The Bible in many expressions tells us that scripture has been tried seven times the word seven there means complete that the truths of scripture have been vetted again and again and has been found reliable listen the bible is not the only book that contains pieces of the wisdom of god listen carefully here and there God has dealt with people. Here and there, different religions have tapped into the wisdom of God through the understanding of his principles. And they have captured details that are consistent with God's operation. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Chances are that you can pick a book that is non-Christian. You can pick any religious book on earth and read it and you will find communications that are consistent with the way God would have spoken and how God would have acted and the results even in those books show you that the agency that supplied that result was not of the devil 
It's not an endorsement to the books. The advantage of the Bible is that as a singular compendium, it contains the wisest perspective in all matters. Are we together now? Listen very carefully now. It contains the wisest perspective. Why? Because they are God's opinion. Among all of the books that have been arrayed for the edification of man, the Bible, as a compendium of 66 books, has been recommended by the Spirit of God that it can guide men to know God. It can guide men to become victorious. When you study theology, you will find out that there are many other books. They are generally called extra-biblical texts. There is what we call the annals of the king. There's what we call the Dead Sea Scrolls. There's what we call the books of Jasher. All of these books are extra-biblical materials that were written. Are we together now? But then in the wisdom of God and through his predeterminate counsel, he has found out that the truths contained in this compendium we call the Bible is sufficient to be the limit of the jurisdiction of your knowing God. You will find many books that contain certain information that may not be captured here. And God is telling you within the context of your civilization, any knowledge about me that is not in this volume is not required for life and godliness in as much as you're working with me is concerned. So the Bible becomes the coordinates, if you allow me to use that word, the Bible becomes the defining jurisdiction for your knowing God. Listen very carefully. I'm showing you the reasons why the word of God is called a more sure word of prophecy. God has vetted the truths here and found out that any believer that settles with scripture as contained in this book under the influence of the Holy Spirit, there is no dimension of God required for your knowledge that the truths here in partnership with the Holy Spirit cannot bring you into. So it's called the more sure word. It has predicted your life already. More than any man can predict. More than any man can prophesy. Are you getting what I'm telling you now? The vessel that speaks to you is limited by many factors. Number one, the accuracy of his or her perception. Number two, the accuracy of his or her interpretation. Number three, the atmosphere that became the influence upon which he spoke. Are we together? Number four, the level of renewal of that vessel as at the time he spoke. All of these are factors all together that can interrupt the purity and the quality of the speakings. It doesn't mean the person is fake. These are the things that water down the efficacy of the prophetic. Are we together? And then the mental development of that prophet or that speaker also matters. Chances are that if naturally speaking, I'm a person that detests excellence. If God is giving me a prophetic word that relates to excellence, my, my prior fortitude for trivializing excellence will make that prophetic word not come with the gravity with which it left heaven. Because in my person, I don't find excellence to be something that is needed. If I'm someone, for instance, who does not believe finance and prosperity is useful, are we together? If a prophetic word comes that God is going to make Sam a millionaire, remember I've trained myself to be embarrassed to even talk of millionaire because I've interpreted it as carnality. Chances are that I will just say you are going to be blessed. You see that now. So the efficacy of that prophetic word was corrupted by the limitation of my spiritual understanding. But then let's assume, for instance, that I was accurate enough to deliver it, to be fair enough, and you now receive it. Now remember, I'm not fake. Remember, I'm anointed. Remember, you too, you are not fake. 
You see that now? Yes. The giver and the believer have to be real for it to work. So we agree that two of us are not fake. Are we together? And now you receive that word. And then it never comes to pass. And you go back to God and say, Lord, what happened? I got a prophetic word by a man of God. And according to the word he said by June, I will have a car. Remember, he called my name. It was accurate. He called the name of my wife. It was accurate. Every other detail was accurate. So it supported my believing him. Yet it did not happen. I even fell down. You can add it. And it didn't happen. He prophesied to me that as I return back, my ministry will expand. He described in detail my ministry. Called the name. Called everything. I went back and after five years were worse than even before I came for that consultation. What is the reason? Why do prophecies fail? This is a question that even men of God, apostles and prophets themselves, have not seemed to find an answer to. So usually, as men, the obvious answer is to transfer blames. So I come to you and I say, it has to be your fault. You didn't have faith. You didn't believe me. My track record is there to show. And then the other person says, well, I may have my track record, but I don't know what happened to you as at the time you are speaking to me. I know that it was not God. And then we read scriptures like God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Are we together now? When you read these scriptures, it further confuses you because you are now looking and say, that means that it is within God's power to bring his word to pass. The reason why many people are confused over spiritual things is because we don't read our Bibles. We listen to people but we don't study scripture. We do morning devotions. We listen to messages online, profitable and wonderful. But we don't stay with scripture for the purpose of building understanding, building conviction. So most of our convictions are outsourced and borrowed. Our convictions are hardly intrinsic. Something that came as a result of a revelation given by God. Most of our convictions are outsourced. We borrow the confidence of someone we respect. Just because the person said, this is it. We say, this is it too. Why do prophecies fail? Hallelujah. Are we blessed? So many people have relaxed and crossed their legs so many people have even written the prophetic words that were spoken unto them. Barren women have received prophecies. You will have a child. And it's five years gone. No child. Sick people in the hospital receive prophetic words. Do you have a loved one in the hospital? Yes, sir. Is he sick? Yes, sir. About to die? Yes, sir. Thus saith the Lord, he shall not die. Isaiah 38. Mighty God, we give you praise. Give us understanding and be glorified. Isaiah chapter 38. Mm. In those days, look up please, was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, Isaiah the what? The son of Amos came unto him and said, help me read. Thus saith the Lord. Stop there. So we agreed that it was not the speakings of Isaiah. Thus saith who? The Lord. Set thy house in order. Why? For thou shalt die and not live. Don't call anybody fake again because the prophecy is negative. Who spoke negative here? 
Thus saith who now? Talk to me. I mean, we're Christians. Don't just begin to. The man was a vessel. I brought you Jumia package. You opened it and saw a gun and you arrested. No, you, you don't. I, I was sent. I'm a messenger. Thus saith the Lord. Set your house in order. He says, for thou shalt die. Who are you going to beg? Who will you beg to help you beg God? That God sends a prophet and he speaks. Put your house in order. You are going to die. Verse 2. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed unto who? <laughs> He turned and prayed unto the Lord. Verse 3. And said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. And with a perfect heart, and I have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept so. Verse 4. Then, then, hold on. The first time he said, Thus saith the Lord. Now he's saying, The word of the Lord came to Isaiah, saying, Verse 5 Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father. I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. Listen. What was wrong, O oh God, with your understanding? Couldn't you see the end from the beginning again? You sent a prophet with your reputation on him. And within minutes, prophecies changed. This is a discussion between God and and a man a man goes to God and say God what did I hear that you said you said I'm going to die let me do something to you that will make you change your own word please listen I have added now 15 days to your, to your years verse 6 and I will deliver thee and this city from the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city. Next verse. We are reading to verse 8. And this shall be a sign from the Lord. That what you now hear is more superior than what you had before. Because the both for and against me came from God. So why, which one should I believe? Remember. Thus saith the Lord before came from God. Thus saith the Lord now also came from God. You have kept me in limbo. And God is saying, I will give you a sign. To show you which is superior. Please go back. Verse 7. Verse 7. That the Lord will do this thing that he has spoken. Which one? Which one didn't he speak? Verse 8. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees, which is gone down in the sun, this and that and that, backwards. So the sun returned 10 degrees, by which degrees it was gone down. He gave him a sign. So by the time the guy saw the sun going down, he said, ah, this sign was tied to the second prophecy. And based on it, I know now, and I have confidence that something I have done has made God to override the first prophecy. There is now, let me tell you some interesting things here. Number one, God never admitted he made a mistake. So it was not a mistake. God is, ah, sorry, is it you? Uh, 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 Isaiah, you know how busy I am. I have to speak to this and that. No. God acted as if he didn't talk before. L listen to this. He would have said, okay, go back and say, it's okay, it's okay. No, you don't need to cry. I'm God. Am I still not your father? He just changed as if he's not the one. Imagine if you were that prophet. 
It's as if God just denied you now and left you in trouble. Imagine if Isaiah came to your church. If um, who? Hezekiah came to your church. Miracle service. And you now prophesied. And said, this is what I see. Oh. The same way it moved from positive to negative. I can also stand in the name of the Lord and prophesy to you that by next week, five of you will be in America. And by next week, one person is in jail. The other person is in the hospital. And you will come back and say, Mr. Man, come and arrest this man because he is fake. Between the first prophecy and the second prophecy, man did something. Listen to me very carefully. Between the first speaking of God and what he changed, man did something. That means between a positive prophecy and a negative one that happens, there is man in between that does something that can turn prophecy. Please listen to me and learn this. All personal prophecies, write it down please. All personal prophecies spoken by any servant of God. All. All personal prophecies spoken by any servant of God have conditions that must be adhered to for their actualization. All prophecies. There is no prophecy spoken by any man of God on earth that happens on his own. Are we together? Listen. The prophecy of scripture is a revelation of of the preset principles of God that has already been attached to his speakings. Notice, notice how the construction of scripture is. For every speaking of God, there is a condition. Are you seeing that now? The moment you satisfy that condition, there are some of them you don't even have to pray. The moment you satisfy that condition, it happens. Are we together now? Look at this. I don't need to speak to your ground, your farm, and say in the name of Jesus, except I'm not a man of God. Corn, you must come out this year. No. Already a word had been sent while the earth remains. Seed time and harvest. That means if I never sow, I will not know whether that word is still valid or not. So my sowing gives the word an opportunity to prove itself and then it grows. That the word of God is more sure because already for everything God says, the principle to actualize it has been added. As a man of God, I can receive prophecy for you and not be able to be aligned enough to receive the principle that makes that prophecy come to pass. I can tell you God is going to lift you, but the limitation of my prophetic reception does not allow me to tell you what you must do to make that prophecy come to pass. So I just tell you, this is what I see. You are great. The word of God says, this is what you must do. You are great too. Choose which of the two. That if you never meet a physical man who speaks to you, you can go to Jesus the prophet. I am the way, the truth, and life. Jesus the prophet and look at a scripture and lift that scripture as Jesus speaking to you and say Jesus I hear you I've heard you say to me that it shall come to pass if I diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to observe and do all that you command me this day that you will set me on high above all the nations of the earth and that these blessings will come upon me and overtake me there is no witch in hell hear me 
if you prophesy to me and say, Apostle, I see failure. You are not wrong. But I, have, I know that there is a more sure word of prophecy. For as long as I walk in keeping with what Jesus the prophet said, there is no divination and there is no enchantment from the pit of hell that can override the authority. In the cadre of authority, the prophecy of scripture stands superior to any human prophecy. Men of God and women of God are gradually pushing prophecy outside of the jurisdiction of its relevance. And members are today becoming slaves to men and women of God. A man seems to be able to own the souls of people because you can just speak to anybody anyhow. And they go back saying, this one has spoken. Apostle Joshua Selman has spoken. No. Prophecies can fail to the negative or to the positive. I can speak to you and say God will bless you. You will eat well. Don't obey the principles of scripture that make for increase and you will be surprised. When men say there is a casting down, you will join them and say there is a casting down. Why? Because you violated the principle. There is no truth of scripture. Salvation is the freest thing we know. And the condition is that if thou shalt believe with thy heart, talk to me koinonia, and thou shalt confess with your mouth, that means you can stand around a preacher and he can preach a powerful sermon and you will still go to hell. You had the word, but you still went to hell. This action part, this condition part is why many prophecies fail. The prophet spoke in scripture that a virgin shall be with child. He didn't say a virgin called Mary. He said a virgin. There were many women who qualified for that prophecy. But one woman aligned herself enough. So the angel came to say, Madam, we have found you favored. And I've taught you that favor does not happen automatically. Mary was understudied from heaven. There were many other ladies, but heaven looked at Mary. Does she sustain, please help them, does she sustain the character? Will Mary be able to stand the embarrassment of getting pregnant from a ghost? The way Mary is, if pressure is too much, are you sure she's not going to corner Joseph and run away? Is this woman, is she liable to receiving a bribe from a rabbi? Mary was not just favored. She was studied. Her alignment was making her partner with prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And then the angel came back and said, Mary, we have found you favored. And the favor is that based on our examination, you are the most fit person among the virgins here to carry Jesus. She said, well, um, I don't want to abort prophecy. How shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. And then the angel explained that, okay, this is what will happen. You will not need to meet a man. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. Your stomach will just start bulging out. Don't find it strange. Don't do anything. Don't shout. Don't worry. It's okay. And she said, be it unto me. Be the word unto me. I received the word. Be it unto me according to your word. Mary would have sat down. And said, no, this deal is not fair. The ghost has to come with you and explain to me. And let me understand. If I see him and I think he's really a spirit and that, do you know it would have delayed the birth of Jesus? Heaven would have had to now go back and start looking for another person again. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is very powerful. So God has spoken great things over our lives. Many of us received the word. We didn't receive the conditions. We left the conditions on the ground. When we fell down, we got up, we received the word. But we left the conditions. As a result, 
our lives are a shadow of what God said should be because we received the word but did not receive the conditions. The angel comes and tells Joshua that this city will be defeated but then he gives him the conditions immediately and demands that the conditions be adhered to in total. So he began to go around Jericho once every day. The seventh day he went seven times and they shouted and prophecy came to pass. There is no prophecy that happens on its own. There are few prophecies in the Bible that are called written judgments. There are verdicts already that have been declared. One of it is the eternal doom of Lucifer. There is no prayer retreat that will happen to beg God to change his mind about the condition of Satan. So if you have a dream and you see Satan coming back in heaven to join the seraphs, you know straight up that you are under attack because based on the truth of scripture written, it's a written judgment. Are we together? Another written judgment, the eternal doom of those who reject Christ, the Antichrist and his cohorts, these things are written. The only thing you can do is to exempt yourself from it, but you cannot stop it. Number three, the reality of causes and yokes on earth is written. Ordinances were intentionally put. The only thing you can, you can't stop causes on the earth. No, they are there. The only thing you can do is exempt yourself from it. You can say minus me and my family, but to say minus it out of the earth, no sir, it is not given to you. You can cast out demons from your life, from a church, from your vicinity, but not from the earth. There is nobody who will stand and gather all the demons on earth because he said, I behold, I give you power. Remember scripture, power. So I have that authority. I've been risen with Christ above all thrones, dominions, and every name that is named. You gather all the demons in one place, catch them, and let there be peace on earth. No, that does not happen. I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yes. The number one reason why prophecies do not come to pass is because people receive the word but do not receive the condition. The condition for actualizing the prophecies. The other side of this is that you can change any prophecy. Write it down, please. Don't let anybody tell you there are prophetic words that will not change and cannot change. That is against the character of scripture. The Bible shows us again and again that it is within the power of a believer. Shabrakatos kapatia to change prophecies that means if your father looks at you and says you are cursed you are a foolish and stupid son i know a woman years ago when i was in secondary school there was a woman who was tired of her son stealing she will make her little money and this naughty boy will come and carry continue to fish the money out of the, the mother's wallet and one day she was angry and she looked at him and cursed him she said he will stop stealing only when rats stop stealing let me tell you, this guy, as soon as he's going out of the cell, he won't reach two weeks, he's back again. They know him, they just open the door, there's nothing to ask. What happened? Mm -mm. Just walk in, we know. Do you think that boy does not have a way out? Imagine that that boy is in a place where he never meets a man who can speak to him. Is there hope for that boy? Yes, sir. There is Jesus the prophet. That he can look at it. That even the lawful captives, is it in your Bible? A more sure word of prophecy, even the lawful captives can be delivered. So you can find this truth and believe it. But you just get up and say, wow, I found it. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I'm delivered. Hallelujah. You are not delivered. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You are only informed about deliverance that is possible. Are you seeing how we mock ourselves? We just find it out. Oh, I receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm done. And right after then, you will see what they said should happen. Happen. 
there are conditions what made the captive lawfully captive and what is the condition for that person to be delivered the biggest hit of this prophetic inaccuracy is in the area of financial prosperity many poor people in the church today the years they have spent waiting for prophecy is the same time they would have activated the blessings of god upon their lives they have sat down lazily and carelessly and some foolishly waiting for a prophetic word by an accurate man and members continue to harass men of god around and say you have spoken it's not working i bless you i bless you you are correct but you go and read and study everything the bible says about the blessing how it works and how it is activated and you'll find out that many people are hoping in futility it's true charismatics this is where charismatics have failed the excitement that comes with revelation has swallowed up the need for compliance people just jump here and there things will happen he shall keep thee in perfect peace yes and no evil shall come nigh thy dwelling you go and look for trouble and see what happens it will look as if angels are no longer there so what have you, I, I, I get what i'm saying now yes you can choose to end your life now today right now you go and stand you go and stand on the road let me be prophesying in jesus name you will live long i stand under the oil god has given me while you stroll foolishly you use your will that is more powerful that's the same will that brought jesus into your heart jesus stood at the gate of your heart and would not enter until that will let him in and you stand in front of a door and a truck the spirit of death is an opportunist he looks for a scenario that makes his ministry possible. So he's scouting around Zaria. And here he finds someone about to stand near a T-junction. Carelessly. He will heighten the drunkenness of the driver. And with speed, he will not see you. He will come and clear you. You are dead. Now, resurrection is a different law altogether. We can now start. But as far as that scene is concerned, you are dead. hallelujah let me tell you something that happened to a young man i'm sure he may be listening or maybe he's here it's a big mistake that the boy made he had some carryovers and um he saw me in a dream <coughs> according to him i appeared in a dream and i told him i said everything is all right now watch this now everything is all right very consistent with what god will say are we together the same way God looks at the poor and says, let the poor say, I am rich. They said, I'm rich till they became old. Nothing happened. <laughs> and then the gentleman got up and didn't even do anything. He refused to take the carryovers, refused to do anything. And he just sat down and he called me and was sending text messages and was telling me, look, I'm not trying to jeer the gentleman. No, not at all. I'm just trying to use it to correct. Now, you see, that word was at the mercy of a condition. Are we together now? Is it not when your lecturer sees your script? Now, you have done your own part to at least write. The Spirit of God can now move upon that man to show you mercy. Mercy is not possible now because the condition to activate the mercy was not granted. The same way the Bible says that you will build houses and you keep looking at your land that house will not be built someone will look at you and say speak to me say I, I, the same thing i told you last year is what god is showing me again the day you take a step of faith and you buy sharp sand one tipper and pour there by faith what happens that's your five loaf and two fish you are ready for a miracle a destiny helper can now come and say what's going on here say I'm, I'm starting life or i'm pushing this thing by faith say really come to my office tomorrow now your obedience has allowed prophecy to find expression are we together yes your marriage shall be a blessing 
your children surround your table you will see your children's children you are a bad gentleman and you are a bad lady god will never that prophecy will never come to pass are, are you getting what i'm saying now there are many guys that just cross their legs i saw myself i saw my children i saw a jeep here i saw a resort center here you are dreaming let me tell you this prophecy will never come to pass because god demands diligence and productivity for wealth to happen you have ignored that law and so that prophecy will never come to pass are we together your marriage will be a blessing if you know what it takes for a husband and a wife to live together if the only thing you take to your marriage is prophecy you are in trouble you must take understanding you must take what understanding so that when your wife shouts and says, I hate you, I hate you, I hate the day I married you, you just know that she doesn't mean what she's saying. If you carry that, that straight line prophetic thinking and slap her, that's the end of that marriage. In spite of the fact that the Bible says you will see your children's children. Prophecies can fail. When men do not satisfy the conditions that make for the actualization of that prophecy, it will fail. The same way negative prophecies can be averted. I've told you, I've shared this with you once and again that people continue, you know, here and there, people can have dreams about me over trips that I'm taking, whether by road or by air, and they can send a text and say, Apostle, I got up, I saw a very dangerous dream. Very dangerous dream. And this is it, and I saw a ghastly motor accident, or I saw a plane crash, and you are there. Now, they are not fake, truly. It may be that that's the plot of the enemy. It would be stupid for me to think Satan is going on break for me. No. There are many people who think the devil is attacking them. The devil is not attacking them. Do you know what it takes for Satan to attack you? You to be honest, if you were Satan, will you attack everybody? It's not strategic. What have you done that justifies being attacked? The level of investment you think Satan is making on you is, is, is flattery. Most of what we are getting is the inertia of prophecy. Just sitting on your life and not moving. Because you have refused to do something about it. Take Satan out of the earth. People's condition will only improve a little. Only do what? Improve a little. You will be surprised. You will think if Satan is taken out of the earth, suddenly the poor will be rich. Suddenly, you in fact, let me tell you, there are many people who that God uses the way the devil pushes them to help them understand God. You will be surprised to see that some people's situation will be worse when Satan is out. Because there's no basis for pain again to bring conviction. Some of you right now are sitting down waiting for prophecies to happen by themselves. Some of our parents received prophecies since 1980, 1970 till today. That prophecy has not come to pass. And we continue to carry disappointment in our hearts. I am showing you right now, listen very carefully, that more than the speakings of any man, you must find a place there are many men of God who people will look and say, I see a grace on you. Say, yes, I, I, somebody has told me before, confirmation. I see that you will be a powerful man of God. Yes, sir. I'm seeing like Reinhard Bonke. I see Reinhard Bonke. The other one said that you will never be like Reinhard. Do you know what Reinhard Bonke did to be Reinhard Bonke? Talk about the times of prayer. Talk about the times of fasting. Listen to me. Talk about the times of engaging the world. Talk about the disciplines that it takes to host God's power. You ignore that there is no Reinhard Bonke for you. The worst, in fact, let me even take it a step further before we pray. The worst one is that hands were laid on you when prophecies came. And you just believe that because hands were laid and I fell down. I got up with conditions satisfied automatically. No, you were engraced by that falling. The real anointing for the result has not yet been given. That anointing for the result is waiting when your obedience is complete. That's when it comes on you. The anointing you received, I'm telling you, is the grace to walk in keeping with the conditions that bring that prophecy. 
Are we together? It's a simple message, but it will work wonders in your life. You will call your brother very quickly and say, sir, please come. I already know that this your journey is heading nowhere. Just sit down. Let us discuss. Why is this family like this? He said, don't worry. Prophecy just came last week. And you will know who to drive away from your house respectfully. By the time he comes again, singing all kinds of songs and saying, it does not work, Abi, let's walk again. Bring 200,000. Bring one chicken. Bring one bag of rice. And then success will imaginarily happen. No, sir. Whether a man is fake or real, the result in your life will be the same if you don't engage it. Did you hear what I said? Whether a prophet is fake or a prophet is real, once there is no engaging the conditions that make for actualizing that prophecy, your result, I guarantee you, will be the same. It's why many people don't go to church. They went to a herbalist and the herbalist prophesied to them. And then they got born again and went to a real man of God. He prophesied to them. The result was the same, zero. And they said, I don't, there's no difference. There will not be difference because the defining factor is not God, not the prophets, but you, the recipient of that prophecy. If God tells you you are going to marry a multimillionaire, what are you supposed to do? Thanksgiving. Yes, Thanksgiving. But what, what do you do else where you finish Thanksgiving? You go back and start saying, God, help me. A millionaire means many people will hate him. A millionaire means that he may not have time to rest. A wise person begins to war with prophecy. You, God tells you now you will be a millionaire. How do you behave? Buy new clothes. No, sir. That's not how to conform to prophecy. You go back and follow them who through faith and patience. Once you don't see faith and patience, don't follow them. Even if you see the promise, you must see faith and patience to qualify followership. Anybody you see the promise and you don't see faith, meaning there must be a God equation in their life. There must be something in their equation that forces them to need God. Are we blessed? There are many things today that God has brought this ministry into that God did not directly prophesy to me. I'm not one of those men of God that will lie to you that everything we're seeing is what God... Mm -hmm. There are things God did not tell me. I went to the word, Jesus, the prophet. I looked at the truths of scripture. I understood the truths of scripture and I saw the conditions attached to it because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I read and studied how Jesus increased in ministry. Jesus increased in ministry because he first increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. That means for anything to increase around you, something must increase within you. That's a revelation. So I don't move around with the brain of 50 members and the prayer request of 5,000 members. It doesn't work that way. I must upgrade myself spiritually, intellectually to be able to host the kind of increase that I trust God to bring. We only know that a crowd came to Jesus, but Jesus grew. At age 12, when his mates were running around, Jesus was at the temple learning, learning. Are we together? There were a few times in scripture where we saw Jesus around feasts. There were a few times in scripture where we saw Jesus just enjoying himself. That's the portrait of a serious man of God. You, God has called you into ministry. Every movie that comes out, you must see it and watch it. It's all right if you are called into the movie ministry. But if you are called into the word ministry with power and signs and wonders, that's too much luxury. To host the anointing. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you this. Sincerely, I, I tell you the truth as a man of God. I stand from the standpoint of the knowledge that God has given me. And I look at many people and respectfully I can tell you. There are people that results are far from them. 
I hate to be a bearer of bad news. But even when people stand for me to pray for them, I know that what I'm, I'm doing is not the final solution to that problem. And it is painful as a man of God. Not many people will tell you this truth. Because sometimes you see men of God who are victims of manipulating the ignorance of people. The ignorance of people can be used to the advantage of the man of God. There are times that people stand with seeds here sincerely. And I look at them and they say, Apostle, I just emptied my account and my heart is bleeding. What is this for now? You say, Apostle, I know things can turn around in my family. I know the answer is yes and no. Yes, a breakthrough can come. But sustainable financial open doors, no, sir. There are truths you must learn. So I tell the person, okay, go and get koinonia teachings there. And sometimes as I'm talking to them, they start shaking. The moment they fall, they stand up and just laugh. You see some of them calling their loved ones, it's done. No, it's not exactly done. Honestly. You see, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You must, you, must, you must love God and love people to be this honest. There are very successful people in this ministry, in business, career, and so on and so forth. Every one of them can tell you the different units, the different dimensions that construct themselves together to spell success were adhered to. Where the prophetic was needed, they opened themselves to that dimension. Where prayer was needed, they opened themselves. Where diligence was needed, they opened themselves. Like the ingredients of a, of a meal, everything was combined together to equal success. This is what I'm teaching you. Handing over the responsibility of your destiny to the prophetic alone as the ultimate determinant of your success and not staying with the word of God to understand the conditions will end you in futility and in pain. There were many things that I did not see in my life in spite of the prophetic words I kept receiving. I had to study prophecy and say, look, I have to look at this thing and examine it very carefully. And I began to find out if thou shalt diligently, Deuteronomy 28, please give it to us. Deuteronomy 28, if thou shalt diligently hearken, look up please. This is prophecy, the correct approach to prophecy. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. To what? Observe and to Faith is not just hearing what God has said. Faith is doing what God says should be done to see that result. When the rich man came to Jesus, he said, Good master, what must I do to be saved? Apostle, the devourer is coming every time. I can't hold ten naira like this. It's as if there's a bag. Now, let me tell you this. I can stand as a man of God. Please watch this. We're going to pray shortly. I can stand as a man of God and God can show me a revelation. I can look at, for instance, come Sam, it's looking sharp and smart. Now watch this. You see how sharp and smart Sam is looking. Imagine that God opens my eyes. Now the way prophetic things are interpreted, you have to be spiritual and be grounded in the word to interpret them properly. Because God will open my eyes now. Do you know what I will see? I will see this. I will see Sam holding a basket and I will see water being poured in that basket and going down. That can be a template that God is showing me to mean that there is loss and wastage in his life. Are we together now? So he uses because God speaks in pictures. The Bible calls it similitudes. It is not only words. God speaks in pictures. So when I see that now, watch this. I can say, ah, Sam, all that I see, your finance is going down. You say, yes, it's true. Everything going down. You say, yes. You don't cover that basket just with a prophetic word. No. Remember the going down of the finances is a product of many decisions that he is taking. So the real captivity is the financial decisions. His understanding about God's methodologies as far as increase is concerned that affects and influences the decisions he's taking, that now authorizes this opportunist called the devourer to destroy him. 
So to really help Sam, after prophesying to him, I will say, Sam, I need to show you the conditions provided for by scripture to stabilize your finance. Number one, let's look at the spiritual laws you are breaking. Number two, let's look at the understanding. Let's look at what you are doing. You are not producing anything. You are not, you are not diligent. You are not exchanging anything for value. Number two, your reputation is making you to make bad decisions that are above and beyond your financial level. Now, you are closing that door permanently. Remember that knowledge and wisdom are stabilizers of destiny. When Sam goes back now, number one, he will pray and rebuke that spirit. But number two, he has now received a dimension of intelligence that teaches him that patience is godly. Are we together? That teaches him that it is all right to move small in life. If all you have is a shoe of 300 naira, it is not a mockery on your reputation. An understanding you had before called it shame. What you have now received calls it process. Because of that now, when the devourer comes as usual, a fortification has been built through knowledge. Now the prophecy of Sam, God is changing your life, can now happen. Because favor can now come. A system of preservation has come. This is how Sam is warring with this prophecy. Otherwise, Sam can kneel down and say, yes, sir, I will speak to him. The destiny helper will come and pour the same water into the same basket. So here's what happens in church. And I say this to churches and ministries like ours here that are apostolic and prophetic because many times we have little value for the exegesis of the word. Bringing understanding to the saints, bringing illumination because of the charismatism around the demonstration of the spirit and the prophetic. Many times we, we feel embarrassed even as, ma as men of God to settle down and mature believers through the teaching of the word. We would prefer... To just begin to move. Imagine that I, I, I come here now and the power of God begins to break out. I mean, it's easy for you to see that this is that Joshua Selman. You know, the Bible said this is that. So when you bring a visitor, you say, I told you. It will reach 10 minutes. When he comes up, you'll be flying. I, you doubted me. Now you see it happening. But sometimes when you sit down, you see the way believers are embarrassed and ashamed. When the word of God is taught you, you see that each, I need something. When someone shouts, they start laughing, you know, it just, it's like it just eases up because many people do not want to grow. We have taught that prophecy is a shortcut to destiny. No, prophecy is part of the requirements. Listen very carefully. It's part of the systems that were put by the wisdom of God for the building of the saints. Prophecy was not designed to replace obedience to God's set order. If I give you a book and I say study this book on church growth and success and leadership and administration, chances are you are going to throw that book away. If I say come to me and I will receive just one touch. How many touches? One. One touch, you go back, your cathedral will enter another dimension. That prophecy will work if you have prepared your way like Dotham before you go. Dotham prepared his way before the Lord. If you have prepared your way, you have done your assignment. Oh, with, with Jesus' joy, that oil will come and set your life in order. Before the fire came, there was already a sacrifice prepared already. The fire would not come. The fire cannot come and be hanging in the air and say, oh, you have quickly prepared the sacrifice. You prepare the sacrifice first. There are some of you, the prophecy on your life requires a requisite level of transformation for it to come. And since your rate of change is slow, it will take a long time. So when you say, God help me, God says, I'm, I'm ready to do it today if you will change to that dimension. What do you understand about pastoring thousands of people? What do you understand about the diplomacy of conflict management? What do you understand about leadership and administration? What do you understand about finance? What do you understand about impact and influence? What do you understand about preparing sermons? What do you understand about 
about giving people an expression, growth. Just anoint me, oh God, don't worry about anything. Let me tell you what you will. You will produce a place with so many miracles that will depend on you. They will never be able to rise. This is the tragedy of the prophetic and the apostolic ministry. If I speak to you, Sam, and by tomorrow, someone gives Sam a house, a car, do you think next week Sam will come for Koinonia with speed? Sam will not even sit down there. He will sit down on the altar. Are you seeing that now? And then, the day, let's assume that this is a branch church. The day they now want to transfer me to go to the U.S., what do you think God will be telling Sam at that point? Sam will almost die that he had God. No. The emotional connect that comes by reason of the breakthrough he received through my life has made my voice look like the voice of God to him. And most often than not, God did not speak and tell him to go anywhere. He just examined the other replacement they brought. And the lazy nature of the man greeted the congregation. I said, no, I won't sit under this grace. Not at this strategic point of my life. And then he will get up and now begin to travel and go and meet me in the U.S. This guy's destiny has been wrongly attached to me. Are you seeing that now? To the point that this man can never know God by himself. Because the definition of Christianity and breakthrough as proposed by me is that if you do not receive a prophetic word from me, you are grounded, you are dead, you are finished. My name is Joshua Selman and I'm telling you it's a lie. If you take the word of God and believe it and walk within the principles that are kept in the word, I repeat to you that no divination and no enchantment. If you are reading the word properly, there are places in the word that will lead you to go and look for men to pray for you. So you don't have to be afraid of being in error. Are we together? I continue to watch with frustration, sincerely speaking. As prophecies continue to be aborted in the lives of people. And they blame men of God. And continue to make negative prophecies to come to pass in their lives. I told you respectfully so. That in my entire paternal lineage. Sincerely. I think aside from my dad. By the grace of God, I'm the most successful person. Entire, draw the line from anywhere till this. Can you imagine that kind of thing? I saw the spirit of failure and poverty and hardship in my family. You can be the greatest of anything, but live long enough, you must be the least. When I saw it, number one, I didn't deny it. I knew that the, if you deny it, that's another delay you are causing for yourself. The quicker you admitted it, you, the, the better for you. Just sit down, look at it and say, ah, okay, this is it. I see that there is problem here. But I made up my mind. I, I love the word of God. I found it too. I found it. See, I have set thee above thrones, dominions, Above all of this thing, every name that is named. I started seeing something here. Jesus, the prophet, started speaking to my destiny. And I had the foolishness to believe him. The childlikeness to believe him. I believed him so much so that I disbelieved every other thing I saw. And then the Holy Spirit guided me enough to know what are the conditions. What does it take to actualize this? And then he began to show me step by step. And I said, it may be painful, oh God. I may not be able to go through this myself, but supply the grace. And he says, my strength is perfected in your weakness. Look what he has done today. Apostle is lucky. 
They pray. I remember when they were prophesying that day. Was it not two of us? They prophesied over everybody in a meeting. That's what many people would say. That's what many parents say. They look at many great men of God and say, ah, this guy, I, he was just lucky. I knew the meeting he got born again. The same altar call was made for everybody. One person responded, another person wished. Please make up your mind. Extraordinary fruitfulness will remain a dream. Did you hear what I said? There are people who are engaging with understanding and the results are showing. Extraordinary fruitfulness is not just it. Will, December will come and for many people they will find out that nothing like extraordinary fruitfulness happened. But if someone makes up his mind like Timothy that I'm going to war a good warfare, prophecy has been sent ahead of me. Lord, what do I need to do? Show me. Your greatest prayer in this season can be, is not just show me your ways. Lord, show me the part I have to play. Show me. What do I have to do, oh God, to change my financial story? I've desired fresh oil. I have fasted and I have prayed. What is the key to the anointing? What is the key to a mighty supply of the spirit upon a man? I found out the key to keep the Holy Spirit close to a man. Because I knew that the nature of the ministry that God had committed to me would require a depth of intimacy. And I didn't want theory. Lord, show me. What keeps the Holy Spirit close to a man? Think of the risk that happens when he becomes far from you. And don't let nobody lie to you that he cannot be far from you. spirit of the living god i found him as the secret that he's an ever-present help in time of need but what do i need to do as the recipient thou shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it let me tell you this i trust god's way one of the secrets of my life is that i trust the way of god most of us have allowed education, intellect, to corrupt the potency of the ways of God. I believe God. I believe God. I remember when the Lord gave instructions here for miracle service. Foolishly and childishly. I did it. Everything he says to do, you do. When God declares anything here, we go after him foolishly. I remember Jimmy here, he would tell you, when the Lord said to put some of the koinonia messages online, audio, audio message that is not very clear. People online, those of you who are social media experts know that people cannot spend two hours listening to something. They don't have that time. You break it into sections and someone sits down for two hours 30 minutes listening to volumes and volumes of a message my brothers and my sisters it is not let me tell you 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 will be shocked at the power of god that is released and the energy that prophecy carries when you align with it show me a man who has received a word from a prophet of god or has received a word from scripture and obtained grace from God to understand the requirements and do it. I show you a man who you're speaking against, you're cursing against, you're wishing against. is a waste of time. My confidence today in life and in ministry is on my determination to keep doing the things that allow to host the presence of God. My confidence today is to keep doing the things that continue to bring increase in my life and in the ministry. That way you can stand and beat your chest under God and know you have entered your Sabbath. Satan can come Challenges can come, but you are as assured of victory 
as you are assured of Christ sitting on his throne. My life has no fear. I sincerely mean it because I have found out. I found how to commit God. You commit God in the affairs of your life by obtaining grace to know what to do. Jesus himself knew what to do. Buy the ingredients for jollof rice and bring somebody who does not know how to mix them. You have potential for rice. That's prophecy. But that rice will never, never be prepared there. At best, you are going to have nonsense prepared at rice. But then bring somebody who has taken out time to learn how to prepare rice and then bring the ingredients. And within a short time, as short as an hour, you will see a delicious pot or plate of rice. God is not withholding financial blessings from you. The word has come. If nobody ever spoke it to you, scripture has already told you. God is not withholding increase and influence from you. Something about your not understanding his ways may be responsible. The irresponsibility of allowing prophecy work itself, thinking it is spiritual, is very dangerous. From the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. But when Jesus walked upon the earth, they tried to distract him. And he said, no, 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 no. My meat is to do the will of him that has sent me. Jesus had an option to abort salvation. When he was at Gethsemane, he cried and prayed. Can you take this cup off me? But he said, nevertheless, my will, not my will, but yours be done. And when he took that cross, it was not an angel carrying it. He was carrying it, feeling the weight. The moment he wanted to throw it, he remembered. He remembered. Man will not be grafted through me to be seated. I, 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 if I throw this now, I cannot call many sons to glory. Let me tell you this and I confess to you. There were times in my life when I would be walking through the night and sometimes I would just stop and a joy of the spirit will come over me. Because I saw the days coming. I knew that there were days of joy and rest. And no pain at that point sustained an ability to interrupt my focus. I knew. I was trying to know the Holy Spirit. Knowing the Holy Spirit is hard. Sometimes you want to sleep and he will just tell you to stroll. You will think you are going to pray for one hour. And you will just return to six in the morning. It's the price. While I am doing that, someone is seen in a vision that a young man is going to arise from the north and he will carry the word and the life and the power of Jesus. That prophecy can remain in the realm of the spirit when you do not partner with prophecy. Is God speaking? What have you not done that is making prophecy to not manifest in your life? What have you done to allow a negative prophecy come to pass in your life? Something was said. You saw it in a dream. That the devil wants to oppress you. You saw it in a dream. That an attack was coming to you and your children. You just got up and, and wrote it down. Usually that's what we do. I had a dream. 3.22 a.m. In that dream. I saw knife. I saw all of that. And you didn't do anything about it. Until six months after that time. Watch this. It will not come as a physical robber. Your prayer life goes down. Your finances goes down. All helpers leave you. What was working stops working. That was the dream. Prophecy seeking expression in your life. Like Hezekiah, there's something you would have done about it. Hey, everybody in this house, turn every plate upside down. I have seen something that is an evil and we can stay the power away. And then you get up and pray. There are many things I see that the devil wants to bring upon people, upon the ministry, upon my life. There are people who send me text messages sometimes, Apostle, this is what I've seen. Pray about the ministry. I don't sit down and cross my legs. While you are sleeping and snoring, I'm awake with God crying and praying. Lord, worship team. Lord, prayer department. Lord, this, there must be increase. People are coming. You are opening up doors. Prophecy. 
And you say, I saw it too. I saw that by this time, Koinonia would have increased. Yes, you saw it, but it was engaged. Is someone getting the teaching this night? Because we are going to pray. You will never see the outstretched arm of God with the assumption that prophecy will work itself out. No. You have a dream and you see people dying in your family. That means there is a word that is bringing death. What do you do about it? You don't wait till somebody dies. Say, ah! And you know, I, I, the other day I told you, you are a witness. What kind of witness is that? You can get up and fast. Fasting is powerful, oh. Yes, listen to me. Our, our Ajebo generation, fasting is important for a man's destiny. You will never be able to do business with God if you cannot turn your plates upside down. There are times you need to sit like Elijah. You write the list of all the nonsense you saw that must change. One by one you are praying. What is this I saw about my wife? What is this I saw about my husband? What is this I saw about my business? I saw an attack. I, I'm sleeping and all of a sudden I have a dream. And in that dream I see chains everywhere. In that dream I see people crying. You don't need an interpretation. The character of scripture shows you that mourning is not associated with glory. So already let the Bible interpret that for you that is trouble. You can call somebody. I pray that you have a good friend. That when you need to change prophecy he will be available with you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That you have a good friend that you say, please, can you stay awake for three hours with me today? I'm sensing the spirit of death over my family. I don't know, but I've been sensing it. And the person says, ah, you know, coincidentally, I had a dream of death. It shouldn't put fear. Your consolation is that the most sure word of prophecy has an ability to superimpose everything planned. And you can get up in the night and agree. And both of you are praying. How do you pray? You engage the truth of scripture. You don't pray and say, God, why now? Where are you? Is it that are you still there? That, that's not prayer. That's just lamentation. You begin to pray when you engage the truth of God's word. I choose life. I'm the head of this home. My children may be too small to choose life, but I stand as a covering. I choose life. When they are in school, I choose life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? I've taught you this thing. Listen, if you are married in this place, young or old, you are a man. If you don't go around praying and laying hands on your children, you are not a very good ambassador of this ministry. The children should be sleeping. Don't go, you are not a father because they serve you plate and you are sitting now. You get up and carry that regalia of priesthood. You are changing negative prophecies. Your child comes back with a result from second position to twelfth. The other one from 4 to 18. You don't just flog them. No. Psalm 112. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord. This is prophecy now. That delighted greatly in his commands. His seed shall be mighty. This is not might. Lord, you have said my seed shall be mighty. Shekakoska. Manda prakato selekata. While you are speaking that word, there are powers, let me tell you, that reside in the heavenlies. You speak and command your morning. He told Job, has thou commanded thy morning? You, are, you, are, you sleep and wake up with a dream. Someone injects you with HIV and tells you this is HIV. You get up and say, and you know, I'm feeling the spot. You get up and see marks on your body. Physical marks from a dream. And you sit down and just laugh. Laugh? No matter how mad a man is, he does not enter fire by mistake. As mad as he is, he comes near fire, he will move. I'm not that mad. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind. We want to dwell under the shadow of your wings. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind we want to dwell 
under the shadow of your wings. Over every challenge in my life, blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Blow, blow, say, blow, like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Everything you see in your dream is prophecy. Seeking manifestation, good or bad. Everything you see in your dream, in your vision is a prophecy. Seeking manifestation. You can allow it, you can change it, you can stop it. Inaction is a disaster to a believer. It's what you don't want that you will see happen. Can you open your mouth in one minute and just blast in the spirit? Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Please look at me. One of the demands of priesthood, get my message on priesthood, is that men become men of prayer not just prayer in terms of petition but legislators of spiritual reality anything you sit and watch will happen did you hear what i said listen there was no record of job praying for himself there was no record of any man praying for job the devil came through him and through his covering to afflict his family. He prayed for his children. It's true that he feared God. It's true that he ensured evil. But that's not the seed for deliverance. You must know how to pray and engage. Listen, let me tell you. Let the devil get used to you not keeping quiet when negative things come. Don't say I'm not a member of prayer band. I'm not a member of this and that. The times that we live in, let me tell you, it requires men with the spirit of Issachar. It's a man who had an understanding of the times. Otherwise, you can confess, I shall not die. And that will sweep you like a chicken. You must have the eyes that see. Lift your voice and begin to pray. I change everything that is not consistent with the counsel of God concerning my life, my family, my finances please pray pray I change everything in the name of Jesus Christ every prophecy that is not of God seeking manifestation through my life I reject you by the power of the Holy Ghost I reject you. I speak the word, the most sure word of prophecy. I shall not die, but leave the head, not the tail, above only, not beneath. Pray. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. I'd like you to find someone to agree with you. Everything God said or you have seen in the spirit that is consistent with God's will and has been hanging by any power of divination within the second heavens. Lift your voice and cry. I command that it must come to pass. I wore a good warfare in the realm of the spirit. I decree and I declare the joy, the peace, the prosperity, the blessings, the anointing upon my ministry, upon my life. I declare the powers of the heavens holding everything that belongs to me I command the release by the power of the word of God pray few minutes and we're done you are enforcing prophecy Hallelujah. Matthew 18, 18, please. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Yeah. 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 shall be bound in heaven whatsoever thou shall lose binding and losing thoughts of allowing and disallowing are we together now please listen to me please listen listen that everything that belongs to me and has been held by any power it must be released now not tomorrow now lift your voice and begin to pray Koinonia, pray. Pray prophecy to manifestation. Pray prophecy to manifestation. I command the release in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, Baroko Shata Lekata, Rakata Barakato Seketes.
Alléluia. 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 Last prayer, and we are done tonight. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, Him I will trust. Continue, please. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. 4. He shall cover me with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Five. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that wasted or flyeth by day. Listen very carefully. Look at what the Bible is writing here. Next verse. Six. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. Seven, a thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand by thy right side. It shall not come nigh thee. Eight, only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Listen, that means every time you hear of negative things, someone is dying, they are kidnapping someone, this is happening. In as much as you sympathize with people, you don't do them at the detriment of your own conviction. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? If Joshua Selman dies today, it does not mean that the truth of scripture giving life is a lie. So in as much as you sympathize with people, do it lovingly, but not at the detriment of the immutability of God's counsel. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. until you rise up to possess your possession, you will never, never possess your possession. Jesus was in the wilderness praying and fasting for 40 days. Satan came to tempt him. When he defeated him, he returned in the power of the spirit and his fame went abroad. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but there are controlling powers that continue to see that negative prophecies continue to be enforced in our lives. And until the saints understand how to legislate by the spirit, we will continue to be victims of the speakings of men. Last prayer. Father, every prophetic word that came through your word or through your servant upon my life this year i stand in partnership i call it maranatha let that prophecy manifest in my life lift your voice and pray the conditions to make it happen i obtain grace to understand i obtain grace to walk in keeping with it pray every prophetic word about my spiritual life, about my finances, about my marriage, about fruitfulness, I receive by the Spirit. I obtain grace. I obtain understanding. I obtain grace. I obtain understanding to know what to do, to know how to partner with prophecy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one testimony and we'll round up tonight. A gentleman sent me a text and he said he was tired of what was happening to him and his family. 
you know what people call failure at the edge of breakthrough that you see good things but just when your hand is about to obtain it trouble must ferment itself from wherever and come and destroy you he said he was tired and one night he took out time that if he's to die here he would die and he would pray listen to me true story he was praying he said he had come here with an oil that i prayed for and then you know he went back and applied that oil and he was praying and praying and praying and then it looked like he fell into a trance and according to him he said i walked to him and i told him to lift two of his hands and when he lifted his hands i started removing what looked like maggots out from his hands like that removed or uh, maybe a number of them when the gentleman said that happened by the next day he got a job next day he got a job see i've told you time does not change anything you must engage with prophecy you must engage with prophecy don't wait until miracle service when you write your prayer request and bring it here go and write it now and trust God for grace one hour in the night will not stop your sleep we spend three hours worrying wake up in the night every man in koinonia is an intercessor let me tell you if you're a married man in this place and you're not an intercessor you are not a good ambassador learn it wake up and pray put that request on the ground place your hand on it pray it will look like nothing is happening don't mind what you are seeing you just pray forever oh lord thy word is settled let me tell you what will happen when you pray satan will use the sense realm to send images that negate what you are trying to do because he knows that to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace you can even finish that prayer and go back to bed and have a dream that is another negative connotation and you stand up and say but i just wasted my time so these three days prayer and fasting is nothing if it was not bringing an effect with hell the devil would not send you that kind of dream the key is to remain let me tell you this there are certain prayers that you don't pray for one day let me be sincere with you and i don't mean to insult anybody but that understanding that when you pray once is done well i may not have enough experience to challenge that but i can tell you the one i know that when you stay on an issue huh, and you pray and cry jesus prayed he came out saw the disciples went back and prayed the same words the same way three times jesus prayed bible said looking up to jesus not up to any prophet or any man of god don't pray once and sit down how long do i pray until you see the feast manifest in the earth realm you pray on when you see the the cloud manifest in the earth realm it gives you a sign then you know that those realities have reached otherwise please pray if it takes 21 days pray the grace for the the spirit of gluttony that will not allow you to fast and pray i curse it now in the name of jesus it's a different thing if you have a health issue that may not allow you to pray there are many of us the last time you fasted was during um fasting and prayer that's not healthy for your spiritual life please don't say it does not matter everybody know we know where we are coming from by god's grace our children will not go through this but in between where you are coming from and where you are going you must stand as a bridge and flog this thing out once and for all reject spiritual laziness stay with the word please listen to me let me advise you i say this not to everybody at least i have a responsibility over you please obtain grace from god to sit down in one place this spirit of running up and down from here visiting this running and down i cancel that spirit in this season in jesus name you must obtain grace don't sit in your room gisting gossiping talking open your bible and sit down for god's sake and study more than listening to a message carry your bible carry your notebook and sit down 
read something. Spirit of the living God, open my eyes and sit down and read. There were times when any house you go to, you see people, even if they are gisting, their Bible is in front of them. But right now, is this, these are phones everywhere. You sit down, you are watching film, you are watching this. I'm not saying it's wrong, but life has seasons for God's sake. A farmer who is sleeping during rainy season will be foolish to go to the farm during harvest. The earth still works on seed time and harvest. You are a man of God here. Reduce your physical exposure and stay in the secret place and pray. I'll move around. I'm a pastor this. I'm a prophet this. I'm a apostle this. Sit down in one place with the word. Be sound in scripture. Be mighty in power. Most of what you need for your destiny is internal. Sit down. Don't become a busybody roaming here and there. You know, in the afternoon, you are there in the hot sun. You are moving around. You visit this one. I'm not saying visitation is wrong. But you are at a critical point of your destiny. Receive grace to sit down. Study. When you fall asleep and you stand up and you didn't read your Bible, you didn't pray. Don't act like nothing happened. Don't forgive yourself for nothing. No! You stand up. Any time is right for prayer. If you plan to pray in the morning and evening, that's my recommendation for you. I've told you. The morning times and the evening times are powerful times. So said the ministry of Jesus. There are few times Jesus prayed in the afternoon. I'm not saying prayer in the afternoon is wrong. But the activities of life will not give you the kind of focus. Wake up in the morning and pray. Wake up in the night and pray. Some of you as you go back now, don't say it's too late and it's too cold. Receive grace from God. Stretch a little and pray. And don't just pray anyhow. Pray strategically. Pray scriptures. Obtain grace from God. There's no light. You switch on your candle. You switch on your phone. Instead of just watching a movie and then you, 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 watch, you watch spirits to enter your destiny. There is a price for this thing. Let me tell you. God is not a magician. There is a real price. Either you want it or you don't. But if you want it, you mean business. And be aware of distractors. Are we together? There are people who are sincere people. But somehow it looks like because of their weakness, they allow the devil. Just when you want to pray, they just come and knock your house. Have the courage to tell people, please, I would appreciate it if you want to come and see me. I truly would appreciate that you just let me know. I may be studying. Or you can come anytime, but please don't be offended if you come and find me studying. Somebody should not buy a DVD and come to your house to watch and say he's all spoiled. Is that a blessing? What if he comes to meet you doing something? Please take your life seriously. This is about destiny. Make up your mind that this prophetic word must come to pass. Especially this issue of finances. Go and get... There are too many messages that have been preached around the area of finances. Get it and sit with it. Don't just say lay hands on me. Thank God for seed. Thank God for the prophetic. But sit down. I'm a young man. What does it take to be established? Lord, will I end up in this one room forever? The answer is yes until you change it. You sit down. What do I need to know? Are we together? Father, we thank you. We bless you for tonight. You have shown to us that without engaging prophecy, it will fail. And you have shown to us that negative prophecies can be changed. Lord, bring us together as a family of faith and as a body of believers to a point where we exalt the truths of your word. We exalt the immutability of your counsel more than any opinion we choose the word of god as a sure word a more sure word of prophecy we choose the word of god as final authority in all matters over our lives we stake our lives at your word in the name of jesus father i pray for your precious people every condition that needs to be engaged 
to actualize every prophetic word that is upon their lives i pray that both the grace and the understanding be revealed to them in the name of jesus that you will act out in faith and that in the name of jesus the lord will honor you and the lord will cause your life to be an unending testimony of wonders do this oh god and be glorified for in jesus name we pray amen, amen and amen let me make an altar call last week because of time i couldn't make an altar call a gentleman sent me a text and said apostle i was waiting for an altar call i really wanted to give my life to jesus it broke me so bad i asked the lord for forgiveness and so no matter what it is we'll have to make an altar call please keep standing we are already rounding up please keep standing let's honor those who will be coming there are people inside there are people outside who are saying apostle i desire to hand my life over completely to jesus or i desire to rededicate my life if there's anyone like that you're inside you're outside you're saying i need jesus time is gone but i need jesus please make your way to the front very quickly don't be ashamed don't wait for anybody to come whether you are outside make your way inside god bless you god bless you someone is coming god bless you those outside overflow one overflow two please clear the way for them very quickly there's nothing to be ashamed of you are standing before jesus this is the beginning of a great life the beginning of a great destiny those coming from outside please clear the way for them protocol if there's anyone coming if you're coming please double up make it quick make it quick our time is gone <laughs> hallelujah praise the lord thank you very very much god bless you this is a place where no one at all for any reason and under any condition would condemn you we're here we're a family we love you we salute your courage for making jesus lord of your life this is why uh, one of the reasons why he created this platform it's my joy and my honor to lead you to Jesus, young, old. I want you to lift your right hand and say this passionately and truthfully after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight, if you're joining them, please come very quickly so that you participate in the prayer. Come quickly. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight, I have heard your word. And I declare by faith that you are Lord, you are Savior, you are King over my life and my destiny.